Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Welcome to 4Player Podcast, episode 734. It is October 20th, 2022. My name is Nick Henderson. I'm your host tonight. I'm joined by Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, yo, what up? That's me, Nolan. <laughs> Crispy. Hello. Crispy's like trying so hard. like, I'm not going to do the bit. I'm, I'm not, not going to be a fucking weirdo like Nolan. Nolan's a fucking weirdo, and I hate going Excuse after him every week. Me. He, he just like, he sets the bar, and it's like, you got a yes and. You can't no but. But like, I, I, I don't have the fucking balls to go after Nolan and his it, whatever weird bit he's playing in his mind. He, I hate and Nolan, it. And Nolan just dabbed. Look at that. See how easy that was, Chris? I'm sorry. Chris Davis is also joining us tonight. Hello, Chris. Davis. I'm also here. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Uh, I, so if you're listening to this, if it, if it graced your podcast feed, you may notice this is the first show we've done in uh, three weeks. We haven't done one since the very, very tail end of September. Uh, it's good to be back. I was on vacation. There was no podcast in the interim, but uh, the guys did some community nights or multiplayer nights or whatever the hell you want to call them on the stream. We, we played with the community. We yeah, had to. It yeah. was the only way we could play the game. <laughs> oh, fuck, really? It really was. Oh you, my god, we'll it was. About it. It's true. We'll, we'll talk about Death First, Let It Die tonight. Uh, but also, I just want to, tonight is going to be... It's, it's it's almost like they named the game on purpose. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, ooh, that's Let it die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lots of foreshadowing all, going on. It's all very meta. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about Death First, Let It Die, but it's also a very jam-packed show tonight, guys. We have so much to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Scorn, the, the squishy, the weird squishy H.R. Giger love child um, that I, I played this week. We're talking about Cultic. We're going to talk about uh, 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 Mountain Blade or Banner Lord 2, Mountain Blade. No, uh, Mount, the... Mountain Blade 2, Mountain Banner Blade 2, Lord. Banner Lord. Okay, I got it backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, we've been bombarded with all kinds of news and drama, which we'll talk about in the seg- second segment. We got new Silent Hill games announced. We got a new Resident Evil. We'll look at Resident Evil 4. Uh, we have new Final Fantasy 16 trailer, uh, and Bayonetta 3 has been the source of a lot of drama in the past week, so we'll talk about that stuff as well. Um, but I also want to remind everybody, if you're listening at home, one thing that has changed, we did this last time, we did it again tonight, uh, the community segment where we answer community questions has been pulled out of the show, it is now recorded separately in the pre-show, we, we go live at 8, we answer some questions, we're going to upload those as a separate video on YouTube, um... So if you want to submit questions for a future segment, you can either post a comment on the YouTube video uh, from the previous week. You can go to discord.com or just blah, 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 discord.gg slash four player, or you can go to fourplayernetwork.com and leave a, po- a comment on the post for the last episode. So I'll be pulling from all those places. If you leave it somewhere, I will find it and we'll feature it on an upcoming segment. But again, so much to talk about tonight. Um, I don't know where to start. I Well, I don't, should I talk about my vacation at all? I don't know. Somebody said, yeah, I talk how about was your vacation? Yeah, tell us where, where you skipped you off to for two weeks. Did you go I to went, Japan? No, I did not go to Japan. <laughs> I went, I went as far as the, the West coast. Oh, well uh, then what the fuck was that tweet about? Which, which tweet? You were like, I love you, Robin. I love traveling the world with you. And you like went to Washington. <laughs> no, I said, did I say world? I said, Okay, first I think of all, you did say world. Yeah, you did. Well, I, you, well, first I, I did think the same thing. Like you're traveling around the U.S., and the problem is a lot of the the people in the U.S. think the that world. is the world. You're not wrong. You're not. And wrong. Also, also the statement remains true whether whether I left I the country or not. I know. I just uh, you went a couple states over. <laughs> hey, you know what? In 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 the world we currently live in, you know, pandemic era, I feel like I went around the globe i like i haven't i haven't gone that far outside of my bubble in a very long time um and it was great i went to portland oregon for nine days got to just hang out there and explore and eat food and drink beer and go to the coast and all kinds of stuff there and then we drove down or we flew down to la and went to universal studios for the halloween horror nights uh for a day and then we well we went to universal two days and then we spent four days at disneyland 
uh, which was great. It was a ton of fun. Was not sick at all during the whole thing, and then came back, and now I have a head cold. But you know what? As far as timing goes, uh, that's that's the way I like it. I was so terrified I was going to get like ill or something like halfway through the trip and then be like bedridden for for the other half of it. When, uh, when we went to uh, Canada, the you know mm-hmm. traveling the world uh, a few years <laughs> ago, uh, the second second day I went for just like a nice run. Um, and I, I like I hurt I hurt my foot I like, sprained my foot on the run and oh. it just ruined the rest of the trip because oh, we were no. so, walking so much and I felt like an old man because I'd have to stop at every like five minutes and be like give me a break like I, like my foot hurts so bad <laughs> that super sucks um, but yeah that's where I've been and that's why that's why the show hasn't been happening in the past couple of weeks um, no one do you want to tell us about your tongue flap. <laughs> I mean, I can. God, no, uh, I just forgot uh, about it. I'm it's not going to go into per- detail, Crispy. I won't. It's going to be the perfect segment into scorn. We're going to talk. We're going to yeah. go from body horror to body horror. Um, I uh, I've never bitten my tongue bad before. Um, I you know I, all, all my life, you know, every once in a while you'll bite your tongue and you're like, oh god, oh no no, uh, and it's always been fine for me. Uh, but last Friday I bit my tongue while I was eating, uh, and I was like, oh this is different uh i immediately knew um and there was a lot going on in there blood and stuff and it was bad and i've not eaten solid food since um which sucks uh of course i didn't go into that much detail um uh i didn't use the word flap once yeah uh, I've I only did. been eating soup. Yeah, you introduced like, the word flap into the conversation, Nick. F- for almost a week, all I've been eating is soup, and it's horrible, and I miss solid food, um, but I, I need to give my tongue the time to heal. Um, I, even for a couple of days, wasn't talking uh, because it was making it worse. Uh, so th- th- things are getting there. They're getting better, and hopefully th- yeah, they get better soon because I really want to eat solid food. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Um yeah, uh, I hope your tongue heals. <laughs> Speaking of tongues... And, and anytime Crispy puts the headphones to his ears, just say tongue again. <laughs> we're good. We're good. You're good, Crispy. We're not talking about it anymore. We're, but, <laughs> but I am going to talk about... We're definitely fine. <laughs> I, like I said, I am going to segue straight into talking about Scorn, uh, I guess. Uh, I feel like that's an appropriate place to start, going from tongues to other squishy things i don't know um wieners there are wieners in this game yes uh i think I was, yeah so I, I i played through scorn this past week uh in the spirit of halloween i suppose also it's on game pass so why the hell not uh if, if you're not familiar with this game it's the uh it's the it look it looks like a like an interactive Love letter to H.R. Giger. If you're familiar with his work, he obviously is famous for uh, doing a lot of the artwork that that, uh, you know, gave birth to Alien, the Alien franchise and and among other things. Crispy, are you like watching the footage and like having re- like weird reactions to it? <laughs> no, I'm, Dude, I'm honestly, reacting. I'm not going to lie, Nick. The footage kind of looks like my tongue. <laughs> hey, okay. OK, sorry. My cat is literally playing with hey get off of that oh my god somebody talk for a second i'll be right back sure so scorn uh is a letter to hr giger um uh, it's a game where you walk around in first person around some really creepy environments uh and there's some other cool stuff that nick's going to tell you all about the only thing i know about this Thank game you know is there's back. a part where your character sticks his thing inside a machine that wraps <laughs> around his his thing what well, would that ever happen in an HR Geiger? And I don't know. World? Oh yeah, totally. Oh, look, oh, how yeah. Phallic the, look how phallic this is. Do you see that? You see what this the control is, was? He the has a pneumatic like penis four, gun in his hands it, right now. It, it, it was four like like little Buttholes. fleshy orifices that you stick your fingers in and like pull out and they stretch. That's so every <laughs> so if you're it, it's funny because like describing something like this, if you're not familiar with HR Geiger's work, is going to sound really obtuse or really like, just really gross and weird i don't know i mean it is gross and weird but like if you know if you're familiar with hr giger this should all be very easy to picture if you're listening but this whole game and and this is one of those games where it doesn't um 
It doesn't expressly tell you anything. You have no idea what they what is actually happening. I'm sure there's things you could kind of like read into and try and figure out like what they're trying to say or what the story is, whatever. But there is absolutely no context in this game. There is no uh, there's really no HUD. To sp- I mean, there's a little bit of a HUD just to show you like how much ammo you have and shit. But most of the stuff is kind of integrated into the environment and and the character model and whatnot. Um, and it doesn't tell you anything. There's no text on the screen. There's no dialogue to speak of. It is a puzzle game. It is an adventure puzzle game with some elements of shooting in it, set in a world that looks like it was ripped straight out of HR HR Giger's brain. Um, and I've got to say, like as the the influence is pretty obvious if you're familiar with his work um and that is all a testament to whoever was in charge of like the art direction in this game and the sound design in this game which are both phenomenal um does it sound squishy it dude it's so squishy oh yeah everything is squishy everything you touch makes noise it's like the it's like it's like a weird fucked up version of asmr like everything sounds like, like you're like, oh, that sounds moist. Like, that uh, sounds kind of so like, like, like that's like, kind of nice, but in a fucked up way. <laughs> are you saying that regular ASMR isn't weird and fucked up? Good point. That's like, a good point. Nick like, is playing through a very bony section of the map. The ones I've seen of it are just like flesh walls everywhere. Everything is yes, flesh. Like, it's like stirring a bowl of mac and cheese. Flesh. Yes, and they're flesh. on the ground. So like the enemies that you come in come across are like. Like every, every, did you say the enemies every, you come in? Okay, oh, it okay. is a fucking wow, dude! Everything in this game is phallic. <laughs> that that mighty phallus thrust. Yeah, the the main gun, the first gun, quote unquote, that you get in this game is like this like weird fleshy <laughs> rifle thing. But it shoots out like a a phallic thing that just like impales them. Like, and it kind of are you trying to trigger the special kill? No, oh, well, I mean, gross. dude, you're always. <laughs> I love, I love the commentary from Crispy as he's like watching all this shit happen. Uh, cause like, yeah, so like, you're using this gun to it, it, think of like the second mouth in like the Xenomorphs and Alien. You know, the the, the the second mouth that comes out. That's this gun, and you're going around and you're trying to like. It's the only I'm... gun that has unlimited ammo because I mean, it doesn't have ammo. It just has the mouth thing, but it's very phallic, and you're like pumping it <laughs> into enemies to try oh, and kill I would them. say it's like the the uh the air pre- the air, like pressurized piston from No Country for yeah. Old Men. Actually, actually last night when I was streaming this, uh, I forgot who it was. I apologize. Um but somebody popped in there like I, oh, I think it was Arca Pants in chat popped in and was like, "I'd like to call this gun the penis piston." And that's that's what I started calling it for the, <laughs> the for mean, the rest like, of the stream. The like PP for sure. Little. These little consoles look like fucking circumcised penises Dude, everything <laughs> what is going on everything in this game whether intentional oh you're giving it a prince albert whether explicitly or not feels kind of sexual and like weird and gross sure. but that's kind of how hr giger's art is anyways so and like crispy pointed out earlier like when you go to like do something like open a door or use an elevator you always interface with things by like sticking your hand or your fingers into some kind of like orifice and like pulling it. And it has like the sound effects and just everything. Mm-hmm. Like when you heal yourself, you have this like weird little like living contraption that you carry around that has little tentacles on it. And you like pull the tentacles out and like plug it into your arm holes to like rejuvenate it's, your. It's, it's like so... uh, it's like the end of uh, the leftovers. If you watch that show. I did. Where he yes, had to I enter have. the enter the vault, and he had to use penis identification, <laughs> and he had to like <laughs> yes. put his penis in the thing uh, to ensure it was him. That's essentially what I you're can, doing in this. What? I completely forgot about that. Uh, that is hilarious. That also that mm-hmm. show, amazing. It's a good uh, show. <laughs> but I forgot about that, the penis. I will say that episode is definitely far outside of the norm. <laughs> that yes, show. Yes. Um, um, but yeah. Damn, Nola, that's a deep cut. I love it. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of like that. Um, but like, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to that real quick. Chris Davis, The Leftovers is a fantastic show, and I would highly recommend you watch it. That, yes. like I said, that is when you're watching that scene, you are like, "What the fuck is going on?" Because it is nothing like anything in that show up until that point. Uh, the Leftovers is it's like a fantastic show, though. Is like this generation's lost, and it's better mm-hmm. by like a by like a. Oh, mile. I've heard of this show. Okay, it's but really it's by the good. same guy. It's by the same guy, and it's 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 very very good. Um, but also 
getting into kind of the gameplay of this, there's been a lot of kind of like backlash to this game, which I didn't see coming because I think a lot of people, and this ha- I think this is more commentary on, on like the marketing or whatever. And to be honest, I didn't see a bunch of the marketing. I didn't watch many trailers. I was kind of sold on this the first time I saw it because I like HR Giger's work and I was like, it's atmospheric, it's horror, it's fucked up looking. So yeah, I'm I'm in it to win it. And it was on Game Pass. So fuck it, I'm going to play it. Um, but apparently maybe it was marketed strangely afterwards to make it kind of look more like a shooter than it actually is. So I think a lot of people were really surprised when they booted it up and found out this game was like 70% puzzle and only about 30% shooting. And, um, and 0% story. I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, there is definitely stuff happening that you could call a story, but people like Chris Davis, who are constantly in search of, you know, or I, I just, I just want like context. narrative context narrative. what the fuck is going on, and like, there is no context. Like that is the that is that this is a game that like does not interest is not interested I mean, in giving some... you context at all. You wake up as you're this weird fucked up creature. You wake up on the floor in this weird fucked up world, and all you know is you got to get out of here. That's that is the context, and weird shit happens from that point. And I'm sure you can dig into this. There's probably people that are already written essays about this, like because there's a lot of stuff, especially towards the end, that seems to like be making. I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's making statements or it's 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 becoming more and more kind of like sexual towards the end. We're to the point where like there's creatures that are like pregnant and there's lots of um, sexual innuendo and you're doing things with like, you know, I don't even want to spoil it. People who watch my stream know what I'm talking about. There's some weird fucked up shit towards the end of this game. Um, and I feel like it's maybe trying to say something with that, but I don't I don't know what it is. I'm not even particularly concerned about it it's kind of an art piece i think um but Wait, like are you naked the whole time yeah you're, i mean dude you're naked like but you're like this weird i you're not even you're practically like you don't even look human like i don't mm. even like his the you do actually see this character's like penis at one point but it's Ooh, like it's how like, is it is it good is it nice dude, it's like but it's like tucked into like it's like you, tucked into his stomach you've never and, tucked like, in your you, penis before? Um, you've never done yeah. a buff- buff- buffalo bill Nick, oh you really God. you really hit the word <laughs> penis very very softly, like you were like you were like you do see this guy's penis. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I got his shy all of a sudden. Penis, his penis. penis. Um, but uh, I do want to talk about the gameplay for a second because I think. Oh, there's even been discussion in our own Discord. I'm not even trying to. I'm not trying to attack anybody here. But there's been like that conversation that loves, that people love to talk. I think this comes up a lot when you're talking about like walking simulators, where people like to call into question something status as a video game, um, because there's it's not particularly in depth. And and in some cases, I can see why the argument fits. I still find the argument as hold on in general. Back up. Kind of, people are calling this not a video game. Well, I think. Th- not expressly, but the co- the same kind of conversations are happening where it's like, I don't know if I can justify the money spending on this because it doesn't feel like much of a thing. People like were like, it feels like more of an art piece than a video game. And I was like, that's not true. This game is a puzzle game from, from start Definition to Definition from Oxford. A, ga- a video game is a game played by electronically manipulating images produced by a computer program on a television screen or other display screen. Hey, there we this go. is a video no game. One, no one settled it. Um, but you <laughs> I know, don't understand what the argument is. I mean, but people like to, to like say like, how can you justify spending money on it when like all you do there's only like one mechanic or it's just a game about how can you justify spending money on we bought a zoo? If you want to spend money on something, spend money yeah. on something. It's fine. <laughs> I know, dude. I know the movie, uh, the Matt Damon movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point, Nolan. No, and I'm not even justify that. I'm not trying to like actually have that conversation, but I but I do want to I do want to point out like this is a very what the fuck is this cat doing? Did you see this? Oh, yeah. she's, she's trying to. She's run, in your head now. She's trying to like run up the wall. Anyways, um, she's stop, in heat. Get out of here. Um, God, she like now she's like completely fucked up by train of thought. Um, <laughs> what I want the main point I want to get across in this about this game is that like I I find it fascinating from a design standpoint because it never tells you anything the whole game is trying to find your way out of this very maze-like environment and solving puzzles and 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 stuff but it's all about like 
exploring the oh my god, this fucking cat. Exploring the environment and like like <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. Like touching things and pulling on things and just seeing what they do, like what Hell yeah. Like what happens? It sounds like a young teenage boy. It's it's, yeah. it's a game about vibes and feeling your way around. I love it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's it it uses that, and in, in, in some in some weird ways, it's almost like kind of learning your way around a puzzle in The Witness, where it's like I'm gonna do this and see what see what fucking happens, and and then I'm gonna use that knowledge to like try and manipulate this environment to to find my way out, and like. The puzzles are doing that are very smart, and um, in my opinion, they're very satisfying. The game actually stumbles, I think, when it starts to shift more towards combat, because um, a lot have of it other is... weapons besides this. Yeah, you eventually get okay. you eventually get guns, fleshy hmm. looking guns. Um, but like, I, I do think a lot of people were going into this thinking it was going to be Doom or something, and it is definitely, oh, really? definitely not that. Um, hmm. it, it is very puzzle focused and actually, and actually as a, I think this definitely qualifies as a horror game because what you're seeing is very horrific. Uh, but it is the chillest horror game I've ever played. There's like no sense of tension in terms of, and I'm not even using that as like a knock against it. It's just, you're not in fear for your life. Most of the time, it's just about like taking in your surroundings and trying to figure them out and get out. And I really like that about this. Uh, and a lot of that just involves sticking your fingers in like weird like orifices and stuff. So um, if that you sounds stick cool, stick them in your you, mouth afterwards. <laughs> I hope not. It's all first person, so you can't really tell. Um, but man, I, I I do I do hope that kind of at the end of the year when people are looking back at 2022 and trying to uh, you know talk about you know the, the highs and the lows, whatever. Like people when they're talking about art direction and sound design. I hope Scorn comes up because the people who were who kind of did that, all that stuff with this game, knocked it out of the park. It's crazy, um, and you know, it's, it's we were talking about length when we were answering community questions. It's kind of like the perfect length. I played it for like seven hours and I finished it. <laughs> it got really good girth too. <laughs> no one has. <laughs> um, yeah, check it out. I, I I recommend it. I really enjoyed my time with this. Uh, yeah, it's on Game Pass too, so it's another one of those like no-brainers. If you have Game Pass, which some of you still don't have Game Pass, and I don't understand it, I'm looking at you, Chris's. No, I have it. I have you it. Have it. You have it. I was it playing now. Chivalry Two on Game Pass <gasps> the other day. There you go. So we only have one holdout left. I never thought Chris Davis would be the holdout on Game Pass. Hey, look. You know, I mean, Car- Carlos started a GoFundMe to get me Game Pass, and it hasn't been funded yet. So that's amazing um all right so i've talked enough about scorn that conversation probably took longer than expected because getting distracted by all the penis talk and the, the, i'm surprised the you didn't finish early <laughs> thank you nolan uh speaking of finishing early why don't you talk about death first uh, was that let's that make talk sense? about it Did know, that sure, make sense? okay it works well enough all right i'm listening i'm um, gonna wrangle this cat real quick you're good you're good so I will say the comments I made earlier about the community and how it was at a game night turned into a community night um, is because in order to play a private game uh, of Death First, you have to have the uh, battle pass as it is, uh, but not the basic one, not the second level. You have to pay for the highest level battle pass in order to have a private game um, or, or it, to just play with other people. Now I get it. The whole point is it's a free for all. So they, 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 they discourage, you know, teaming up. It's technically against the terms of service. Um, but in order to play with someone else that you want to play with, you have to pay. Um, uh, well, I don't remember how much the, the $30. $30? Yeah. $30 for this free to play game. You have to pay $30, a battle pass that costs $30. Like that's holy crazy shit. Um, and it doesn't even get you access dead. to a lot of the like yeah. the the stuff in the normal battle pass, right? It well, sure, it gives you the battle pass, so you get it. But like, 
Okay, sure. It's I mean, no whatever. longer a free to play game at that point. You're just like, well, if you that, but that's play the same. That's the same concept of like, so, the, so if you think of, uh, you know, like a Call of Duty or something that has a battle pass, generally that unlocks, you know, items and you know, skins and stuff like that. Um, but that being said, if I want to play Call of Duty with my friends, I can get on a team and play Call of Duty with my friends for free. Uh, yeah. War, like Warzone or something. Um, this is a multiplayer game that if I want to play with my friends, I have to pay for it. I have to pay, or someone at least, at least one person has to. And but anyway. end of which, when you play together with your friend, you don't get any progression. Correct, yes. It what? is a private match, so you earn nothing, you gain nothing, you don't get experience with your weapons, nothing. It is a I'm just starting awful... to see why this is not this is struggling. So, so okay, so let, let's talk about the game. I enjoyed my time with it. It's actually not bad. Is is it game of the year? No, it has some issues, but I enjoyed the concept. Uh, I like the concept that you have a shield uh, that you can potentially bait other people with. So so let's let's kind of break it down. So it is a. The game takes place in a hexagon. Uh, with this no, is related think of to like let it die, right? Like that. that game it's in the same it. universe, yeah. um, but I would not say it's related. Uh, think of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, like the shell, like it has like nodes uh, that you randomly start in one of them. And those technically there's seven because there's the six outer ones in the inner core. You can if you're watching our footage, you can see the map on the top left. That's how the game works. And, as the game progresses, instead of ha- it's, you know, instead of like, like a similar battle royale, instead of having like a fog or a gas or, you know, whatever, um, zones will be like cut off. And if you were in the zone, essentially think of like the shell, you know, the node gets dropped. If you were in there after the timer, like you die, essentially. I mean, granted, right. there is a grace period, um, but the whole point is they are slowly funneling people down. To a single node in which the final battle takes place so it's a battle royale i mean this is no, for, it is a battle it is a, it is a battle royale okay well the, um, an, i mean another mechanic of it is that while you're playing the game will spawn this super powered ai hunter that is actively searching and trying to kill uh player characters correct Gotcha. Um, well, so that's the thing. So Chris Davis, they actually introduced a new hunter since the last time we played um, this new one. Hunter G um, will go after somebody. But you, what you can do is you can essentially tag another player by hitting them. And now he will be locked onto them. Oh, and so it's cool. essentially a game of tag where if the hunter is after you, you can like in the, the first hunter we played with Hunter like H. Hunt I think. Kind I of. Those, uh, like Hunter Q. Uh, whatever it was. I think I want to say it was Hunter H. I guess it would make sense. The, the alphabetically. Wait, no, that doesn't go in the other way. Sony is it's going up. I don't know. There's three new hunters, actually. Maybe there are. OK, so TAC does confirm it was Hunter Q. Um, I, I never encountered them, really, uh, when we played it on the first night. Uh, only once, and I just ran away. Uh, but that one was you essentially lose their line of sight, and then they kind of forget about you, and they look for someone else. Uh, Hunter H, as soon as they lock onto someone, they are, like, going for them. Um, and so you tag someone else. Um. There are various weapons in this game that completely change your play style. There's a machete, there's a katana, there's fists. Uh, there's like a buzzsaw that you can like ride, like a skateboard. Uh, there's all this stuff and stuff that's really cool. Um, the other thing is um, all of this is kind of based on your uh, little floating AI. I forget what it's called. Um, Wilson, I think. Something, something oh, like yeah, that. yeah, Wilson. Um, or... Like the volleyball? Yeah, you're, yeah uh, like your little Wilson unit. Um, if that one gets quote knocked offline, all of your stuff goes down. All you have now are fists, um, and until it comes back online. And so that's kind of one of the mechanics of, if, if you can essentially kind of sit, take down someone's stamina, I guess you could say, and knock their Wilson offline, you have an advantage. Uh, that person now essentially either they got to fist you to death, uh, which probably Whoa. is not going to happen or you run. <laughs> um, so the whole thing is about, you know, your health is not like a, a, a number. I, I, this is the concept I like. Um, as you attack someone, you essentially take their health from them. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom of the screen, there's almost like a heartbeat. And currently mine in this game is 2,000 out of 2,000. That's the max it can go. Um, we start with like, I think 1,000 is like the baseline. And if someone hits you, it goes down. But if you hit them, it goes back up. So it's kind of like a game. You kind of go back and forth. Um, uh, I, yeah, obviously, when you hit someone, you do more damage than you receive. I don't know. And I'm sure there's some ratio. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But the whole point is, um, if you, unlike in something like Warzone, if you try to third party, it doesn't exactly work. Generally, in a game like, like you know, a Warzone, when you're third party, when you run up on an encounter that's already in progress, both people are weak. 
And this, whoever is the victor of that combat now has like max health because they most likely like took so much health from that other person. As long as the combat didn't go horribly, it's not a guarantee that you're going to have the advantage. Um, I don't know if there's like an etiquette in this with like third partying. I try not to do it, but people do it to me all the time when I play it, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, you'll notice in this game that I did win. What um, Battle yeah, Royale besides, game has an etiquette of not third partying. It, I get it. It's just one of those things where because it is like a one on one on one um, when two people are fighting, I kind of feel like an asshole when I run up and just start slashing someone in the back because there's there there is like Chris more like, damage to no, someone in the back. Yeah, embrace it. It. It, it. Like this sounds crazy to me. I've been playing I've been playing a shit ton of Apex Legends for the last two weeks. And what you're saying sounds like weakness that needs to be rooted out. Uh, I guess so. Um, but so, OK, so so let's kind of go back to the game. Um, so you do have a shield, um, which you know, has a limited number of damage. Uh, as soon as it gets broken, you're now very vulnerable um, and you don't want that to happen. Uh, but one of the things I really like about this game. Is that if you are shielding and someone goes in for a hit, you can get like a counter. Um, and so if you time your attack correctly, you can drop your shield and counter again. So it really punishes someone who's just going in and button mashing. And I really like that concept because I, I can often get people by throwing up my shield and they go in and do the attack and I immediately drop it and get a, a like a counter. in. it almost really sounds like, like rolling the, like Dark Souls combat into a battle royale. Is, is that to, 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 to an extent? Yeah. Um, um I wouldn't yeah, say this I, is as nearly as responsive as it, Dark it's, it's definitely not as tight as a Dark Souls game. But so so here here's okay, so I've I've talked kind of positively about this game. Here's the problem. When this game first launched, I think on like the launch day, it had like I don't know, at least twelve hundred people playing it. Not not a horrible amount. Yeah. Um if if you look at something now, for launch like, day, but I agree. Well, eh, whatever. Maybe people didn't know about it. So I didn't even know this game existed until it was out. So yeah. that's why it's, which, it's, which it's is all, kind of a problem. It's all time peak count was 1,380 players. There you go. So think of something like an Overwatch 2 or like the new, like I think they just launched like an expansion or something for World of Warcraft. People are waiting in queues to get into a server. Um, you have to wait in a queue to get into a game in, of, of uh, Death First, but that's because there's nobody else waiting. Uh, which is the big problem. It's so like when I went to go, <laughs> the opposite yeah. problem. The servers aren't overloaded. The servers are fine. There's just no one on them. Uh, so I went when I went to play it the other day to capture some footage. There was 66 people playing the game. Uh, at 16 players a match, you have to have 16. The game won't start with eight. Uh, that's four matches with two leftovers. To give, to give those, those reference, those two, those two people left over were just weren't gonna get. This, they're not getting in, I guess, for a while. It, to give some reference to that, um, Overwatch actually did release numbers like of their their peak concurrent play time over the last ten days. The mm -hmm. the game has been live for ten days, had a notoriously rocky launch, and sure. they're saying that their peak, um, their peak unique users was something like twenty five million. Yes. <laughs> And and they're saying and they're they're like and, and the attitude is like we're happy with that but you know it's not like you know it's not ideal ground <laughs> ground shaking like you know earth shattering numbers yeah. and well, that I was say, that, that was a free play sequel. game that yeah I mean it is a sequel and it but it but considering the fact that it had such a rocky first day where most people For didn't sure. even like play the game <laughs> and also, this game decided to, go... to launch against it yeah that yeah, yeah. it did. Insane. And I would also be so, curious to go look at what the what that was that number was like for the original Overwatch when it launched. It's still probably way better than this, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this is definitely a niche game. It is definitely not like well, it's a, Overwatch is a first person shooter. Yeah. First it's also not shooter. fair because it's Blizzard. You know, like it's got like the Blizzard money behind oh, it. Oh, for you sure. Know what I mean, um, the frustrating thing I have with this game, I, I it ha in my opinion, it has potential. It is not bad. I like some of the weapons. I like some of the play style. I like the environments. I like that um, there are certain platforms that are destructible. Um, so you can essentially bait someone to start like running after you and then destroy the platform from out from under them and kill them. Um, there's a lot of really unique ideas with this game. Uh, the different weapons, the way they interact are good. Like there's like some like fist, like gauntlet type things that are completely different from a sword. They are more punchy. You can do like a ground attack that will like destroy someone's shield. There's all these different mechanics and all their special abilities there's so much on 
potential with this game. But the problem is it it's not it's struggling so hard and in my opinion they need to just fucking just pay some people to play the game pay like a couple thousand people to fucking play the game for a few weeks to get because the frustrating thing is is i enjoyed it but the problem is when i have to wait i would say on average three to four minutes to get into a match not because the servers are overloaded because there's no one playing it's a bad experience so what happened so i will say the other night when i was capturing footage i played I don't know, maybe eight or nine matches. The minimum wait time I had was a minute and a half. The maximum was like eight minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. That, that like eight I mean, and a half, may- over almost nine minutes to get into a match. Uh, I mean, it's, it almost it's so seems frustrating. Like, it almost seems but, like they should consider like dropping the battle pass and then like respecking like how they I, I honestly it. I honestly don't think the battle pass has anything to do with it like I really don't like, it, I, is a, I, like it, it is a wall like it is a barrier and not really you I, know, I, I have paid zero dollars for this game paying anything would not make my experience better um the fact that it is so like so here's prime example I had not played the game for a week we played it as like a community night the other week I put it down I was like hey yeah I'm gonna talk about this on the show let me capture some footage pick it up it takes like eight minutes to get into a match i'm very rusty i'm literally the first person in the game to die i waited eight minutes and 40 seconds to get into a match i watched a loading screen i watched an intro cutscene. i saw all the people the match started in 35 seconds i died now i get to wait eight minutes again that that is a horrible fucking experience yeah. and, and it's uh, one of those things where it's like if, if they can just kind of get the ball rolling I think it would be much better. Honestly, I, I, I agree. It's not perfect. There's some tweaks that need to be done. There's some like, you know, uh, yeah, uh, nerfing of certain things and, and, and whatnot that could probably make the game a little bit better. But the fact that like there's just so few people playing it. Yeah, it, it, it's a self-fulfilling problem. It, you know, it, just because there's no one playing it, nobody wants to play it. Because yeah. there's no one playing it, because when I yeah. want to go play it, I have to wait so long and I get into a match and I die. And there are certain like I think I won three matches the other day. And you know, yeah. I felt fucking fantastic. But the problem is I also lost like seven matches. And generally I either lose right away or I get almost to the very end. I'm either the first person to go out or the second or I win. Like it's one of those things that it's like so frustrating that like you know, sometimes it just like I feel like I waste my time queuing up for a match, getting into it and dying. And I'm like, oh, fucking fantastic. Now I get to wait again. Yeah, and I, I mean, and it, I refuse it, to believe that there's there's not a way for them to address like having parties where players can play together without there being punishments for cooperative play. There's there are certainly ways they can figure out how to do that. I mean, I mean, the, the fascinating thing a about a game. Yeah, which they don't have. So they'd have to, like, they'd have to rethink balancing a whole new like team based mode. I mean, the, it, like it, to call it a battle royale is a little weird too because the player count is kind of small, like it's sixteen. Yeah, it's sixteen yeah. people in a match. That's not even like that's just like a regular multiplayer. Like yeah, shooter. I mean that's like standing. Like if a so, if so a for... multiplayer shooter came out like that and was like, oh, we have sixteen people, people would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's so, so I think had one that, issue. <laughs> In One issue I think is the fact that there's no crossplay. So so Sunji and Chad is bringing up that queues and on PS5 are like a minute. That's great for you. I'm playing it on PC though, uh, and apparently there's way more people on PS5 than there are on PC. And so what? it's unfortunate. I like I don't understand that. I you don't get a benefit. It's not a first person shooter. There's no benefit to playing with mouse and keyboard. In my opinion, that would give you an edge over someone. Besides, I guess like hacking or something, which apparently people in chat were talking about that they were having some issues with hacking. I personally have never really encountered someone that I felt like they were hacking. And every time I've died, I, it's never a quote in my opinion. Like it's been bullshit. I understand why I died. It was my fault. I was being dumb. Whatever. Um, but it's like I don't understand why what the issue is right now. Uh, because, like I said, uh, if they added crossplay, I think this game would probably go a lot further. Um, because yeah. I feel like there would just be so there, they would just add that many more people to the queue, um, and that that would essentially, um, you know, make it you know people more prone to play the game. Like I said, I'm I'm probably not going to continue playing the game because I just don't enjoy waiting, waiting fucking around. on average three to four minutes to get into a match to die yeah. right away to have to wait three to four minutes more it's not fun for me if it's yeah. if it at least had like what a lot of battle royals have right now which is a a 
pre-match playroom where you just run around on the map with just waiting for your match to actually start, I think that'd be a good step in the right direction. And that's but, well, I mean, benefit, I mean, here's the thing, the thing Chris Davis is there's not enough people to make a, a pre-match lobby. Exactly. You know what I'm saying the, the fact is when I get into a queue to, to all of a sudden load into a game, that's because at that same time, 15 other people have now been great. You know, it's like they, on average, if, I'm sure if that, uh, if that existed, the pre-match lobby would have like three people in it. Yeah, I mean, the focus right now, if, if they want to keep this thing alive, needs to be getting that player count up. Once they, get the, once they get the player count out and they build up a base for it, like, it'll like said, kind of it, take it, care it, of itself. But, like, at this the point, they need to just to fucking pay some people. Just pay some I'm, people to play the game, to who, have, who like, a constant, this? like, um, I don't remember. Go like, low. like, where's yeah, the money coming from? Wait, Gung who? Ho. Oh. They're, like, one of those weird Chinese investment firm kind of mm, publishers yeah. yeah so it the game may stay online because somebody's just throwing an infinite amount of money at it but like I, you guys you guys are talking very optimistically about a game that i feel like is quite obviously no no no, no. i i don't think it's right. gonna go anywhere crispy I, like i said i in my opinion it has potential i was regretting playing this game so we, we decided to play this game because you know it just released um, it's the, you know, sec the, the game in the same universe as Let It Die, which I think most of us here enjoyed at least the time we spent with Let It Die. Um, and so thing... I watched and Brad was like, hold on, hold on. I had never heard of this game. And Brad was like, dude, we should play Let it, uh, Death Force. Death Force. And I looked it up and I was like, this looks horrible. I played the game. I had, a, I had a great time the night when we played it with the community. I had a fun fucking time. I enjoyed my time with it. I was, you know, ready to play more. And then, like I said, as soon as I went to go play more, all of a sudden, there's fucking no one playing the game. Yeah. And like I said, if they just had some fucking people playing it, I think it has potential. But because they don't, and it, it, they fucked the launch of this game. I don't know if it will ever go anywhere because they fucked the launch. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry. I misunderstood your original statement. For a second, I thought you were saying you don't think it's going anywhere, and they're not going to can they're not going to like cancel it. But you're saying you're saying it's not going to go anywhere. It's just not going to take off. It's going to fizzle out. Okay. No one's going to fucking yeah. play it. So, and, and it's okay. it's a multiplayer game. And if no one's playing it, that means that no one else wants to play it, which means no one's going to fucking play it. And and yeah. I mean, and and it doesn't look like they're really willing to put the effort to support it because I just opened up their their Steam update uh, queue. Of, of every you know update they pushed and it's it's apologies for maintenance and it's apologies for cheating and it's apologies for server issues and compensating That's for not that a good look they're they're not doing anything to actually promote the fucking game there, there, there's 66 people playing the game right now on pc that's fucking it's a free-to-play game and there are 66 people in the fucking world I playing really, this game yeah. and those 66 think, people are having a great time yeah. Guess how many people are playing Counter Strike Global Offensive, Nick? How old is uh, how, how old is Counter Strike? Twenty two million. Three hundred and seventy thousand people. Like I, I, I are playing, are playing a game that's what like going on twenty years old. I mean, yeah. That's a really weird secondary market, though. Like no, I understand. Um, this this game is making me think literally. Of... It came out over ten years ago. And there are 370,000 people playing it. And the game that came out a couple of weeks ago has 66. I think it's worth, we haven't really, I don't know. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out, though, that like this game being tied into Let It Die, though, does is kind of a fucking slap in the face because it really doesn't have that character or that charm or that like sense of personality that Let It Die had. Like, like what was cool about Let It Die is not present here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think they the try to as let it die. Yeah. At least. What? It is. It is. They they try to uh with the like the pre-match like kind of like pre oh here's the here's the hunter yeah. that's in this game and like yeah. I mean, and, and, oh one? here I'm the announcer and I'm here to tell you about let it and they try to have that same but it's not the same what was the the guy from uh let it die what was his name the the, the skull guy Uncle huh? Death uncle death like they do not have the personality of uncle death it is not as fun like i said the whole thing with let it die is the fact that it was quote online but offline at the same time i i when i played let it die i didn't have to fucking wait for eight minutes i just spun it up and i had a run and, you know it, yeah. it was fun to just be able to play the game it's tough it's rough man I don't I, think it's gonna make it. This this game may, reminded me of Radical Heights, and I just get looked up that game. Mm. Um, 
It's it uh, lasted I, a couple months, but its all time player peak was twelve thousand seven hundred people. Remember, going to breach that. <laughs> remember, no. like what a fucking hail mary play that was too, where they were they, just like, they were like, we're in trouble. We need to make a game to make money. Please play it. Here it is. It doesn't have all the assets yet. Most of the buildings aren't even textured. But hey, go ahead and spend money on it, please. <laughs> like that was. Oh God, it was a hail mary, but I think it's, I think it's a better experience than Deathverse. I also agree with that. <laughs> all right. We need to move on. Uh, For sure. Crispy. You've been playing. Yeah. Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord. Playing Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord, which either just or is just about to go I'm into 1.0. I think it hits 1.0 next, next week. Yeah. Next, like Tuesday or something like that. Um, which is fucking cool. Um, they've been putting out a lot of, they've been putting out a lot of pretty big updates recently, uh, quality of life changes and like, like things to fix weird issues that were a problem before, I guess, uh, not issues that I experienced, but ones I've been kind of like reading about, just, uh, trying to see what the development has been like. Um, yeah. it, it'll be like weird things like the community celebrating cause they finally put out a fix for siege towers during castle sieges where like your fucking troops will get bunched up at the bottom of these, of these ladders and not climb up. And then nobody's going up the walls because they're all stuck <laughs> down at the, like weird shit like that. But what's funny is a lot of these problems have had community support for a long time. <laughs> and like people have been modding fixes into the game and then Tail Worlds, which is, you know, the developer comes in and is like, okay, well, we got the official version now. Here you go. Um, the last cool. the last big update that just went live, I think it was this week, or maybe it was the end of last week, um, was workshop support. So now the modding go. community is much more accessible to yes. Mountain Blade, to Bannerlord. So I have not played with any mods whatsoever yet on this game because I'm trying I've just been trying to feel like to get a feel for like what the base game was like what because the my version is, yeah. Right. My experience with the original Mountain Blade, uh which was called Warband, um was almost entirely was almost entirely uh, through the A Clash of Kings mod, the, the oh, Game of right. Thrones mod that they did for it. So it was a really fun experience, but it was rough around the edges in ways that even like the base game wasn't, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I wanted to see what this game feels like on its own without like third party bells and whistles hanging off of it. Like what did the developers make? How stable is it? How fun is it? Just out of the box, right? Like maybe the the experience that you'd be getting if you were playing this game on console, right? And right. I have to say, fucking great. Like it's really fucking cool. Like it is a lot of fun. There are a lot of really great quality of life mods that exist out there and a lot of them now are on on Steam Workshop and when you look up guides or you look up videos about this game, they're going to tell you like, "Okay, well download these three mods, you know." And I I agree that those mods probably, you know, if you're going to get into this Seriously, if you're going to be putting a lot of time into it, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, but I would say if you went to Steam right now, picked up this game and started playing it right now, if this was, if you know what Mountain Blade is and this is the kind of game you're looking for, it's here. Like it's gonna, it's yeah. gonna fulfill that. It's gonna scratch that itch. It's gonna fulfill that need for you. Um, I do not know how long I've been playing this game. I don't know why I didn't look that up before the show. I'm going to look that up right now. It's been a long time. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably around 20 hours. Okay. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, That's maybe a good sign. More. Maybe more. Um, and That's enough for you to pledge your allegiance to a faction and, and get in a few fights. Yes. In fact, I I spent a long time. You're into Steam? 41 hours, Crispy. Holy shit. 41. Oh, mm -hmm. time flies. Oh, yeah. 41, Crispy, 41. Look at this face like, oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> it was like, 25 like, hours in yeah. the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I guess it has been a long time. Um, a, a, a great majority of that time has been as a uh, as a freelancer. Um, I, I just kind of been running my own 
clan. Like what, so what so basically mean? if you're not familiar with the game, you start as a single character who comes from a small family that you make up in the beginning of the game. Like they ask you questions, they you make a name, you design a banner, um, and there's kind of like this little baked in story about like your family being displaced and you have two younger siblings that go foster at different cities and then you have an older sibling who um, uh, accompanies you on adventure and then you just go out in the world. And it's just like, it, like the game, the one thing I will say is the game has very little direction about what do you do now? What can you do? What should you do? Right. Um, it's a lot like, of this, so figuring this not it a out. game. Like, like when I see something like that, okay, wow. The game suddenly looks very, very, I'm watching the footage and like suddenly it's like at ground level. And I thought I was thinking, I was looking at a it. Lot thinking it was blade. like, I mean, I don't even remember much about mountain blade, the original other than I, I know y'all talked about it a lot but it's been so long since I've seen that game. I didn't really remember what kind of game this is. Yeah. I was sitting here thinking like in my head, I was like, isn't this kind of like a, like a, like a top down strategy type game, but like, no, it is not that, not that it at all. Is that, but the big thing is that you have the option of simulating battles from a, like from a adventure action RPG perspective. You have a character that has its own stats, has its own abilities, has its own equipment and when you are when you go down into the world to like play out a battle it you're just controlling you you can give commands to other troops that are under your orders but like it's just you out there and that's and, what we're seeing in the footage right and now and that's right? what you're seeing right now what i'm yeah. doing in this specific bit of footage is i've taken a quest from a local village they're having problems with a band of bandits this is just like one of the generic bandit missions and they're like hey there's a bandit hideout out in the hills if you could go take care of them that'd be really awesome so you go on foot with like 10 of your best dudes and you just run rough shot through this bandit camp right um at this point in the footage my army has a lot more than the guys you see right now i think i'm up to like well, actually, maybe not. See, the thing is, it goes up and down so much. Like, like where I'm at in the game right now, this is something I recorded a few hours ago. So this is pretty, this is pretty germane to my current situation. However, since I've recorded this footage, uh, the kingdom that I'm a part of has entered into another war. Actually, it entered into another three wars. It went to war with three different kingdoms. Um, and I was involved in a couple more castle sieges. I was involved in a couple of city sieges. Oh, and damn. I was taken prisoner for a while. And uh, I was in a couple of armies that just kind of like disbanded uh, because they got spread out too thin. Um, I've done a lot since just this footage. Um, but, I like how but, your shield has like a dozen arrows sticking out of it. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anytime you get hit with arrows, they just stay there. So a lot of these fights, by the end of it, you just look like a fucking pincushion. Also, it covers you in blood, and, like, your faces look ugly. They're really weird, ugly faces. So, like, at the end of this, you might see my characters like, ah, we did it, man! And her face is covered in blood, and she has the craziest fucking look on her face. It's insane. <laughs> I love it. Um, But I, so I, I picked, um, so, okay. When you make your character, you get to choose one of the, like, six or eight cultures in the game to be, like, kind of your background culture. It gives you a little bonuses. The one I picked was Vlandian. They're kind of like the... They're kind of like the medieval Britain analog, and their their focus is on, like, mounted combat and, and, um, and cavalry. Because I was like, I want to be a knight. I want to be mounted. I want to have a lance, right? So that's what I picked. And I, uh, I spent the first... So if I've played... 42 hours or however long it was of this game i would say 30 of that at least was me just out in the world as a solo clan just me and my army um and i was going around the map and the the three basic things i did was go to cities and participate in tournaments i would go to cities and pick up caravan guard jobs and just like escort caravans around the map um and then pick up like missions like the one you just saw where it's like go to a hideout or ambush uh, a band of marauders with a with a decoy caravan um so just a lot of time spent roaming around the world and fighting people just roaming and fighting and roaming and fighting and killing and winning and getting a bunch of money i eventually bought a couple shops in a couple different cities to give me some passive income and then i got to a point where i was like i don't know what to do now you know, I, I hit this yeah. plateau where I was just kind of doing the same thing for like 10 hours. And I was like, I don't know what to do. 
And I was like, I should join a kingdom. That's what I should do. So I went to Vlandia, the kingdom of my birth. I went to the king, and I was like, I swear my sword to you. And he's like, awesome. Welcome aboard. So now I am a minor lord in this kingdom, and my army yeah. is like all kind of drafted into the kingdom. And the next chapter begins. And the next chapter begins because pretty much right away we went to war across the ocean with the like with the um with like the Middle Eastern region kind of analog. Well we went time. we went on a crusade. We went on a crusade and we time. went over there. I was in an army and we were sieging castles. And the crazy thing was, by the time I fucking joined this army, I had already built such a name for myself as a warrior just by participating in all those tournaments and killing all those bandits and helping out so many people that everybody I meet now is like, hey, I've heard your name and like people are fucking afraid of you. Like you're pretty cool. It's really neat. So by the time I got by the time I joined the kingdom, any like any time I was in an army where they were sacking a castle or sacking a city, they would hold a vote over, okay, who gets control of this as a thief? And, like, everyone was voting for me to take it. So we went over to, like, the Middle nice. East and took over, like, three castles. And they were like, you take them. So I took them all. And then everyone fucked you off. Greedy bitch. And then everyone fucked <laughs> off. And the locals turned on me and took everything back. I got captured a few times. I got held in my own fucking dungeon for a while. And then had to, like, wait for the end of the war and then come home. Like, like I've been in so many wars at this point, And I usually end up getting captured at some point in ransom or like like i uh, like oh yeah it's crazy like how many cities and castles have gone through my possession only to be taken back but now but now i control three castles and i've spent a lot of time buying up troops and training them up and putting them in the castle garrison so i have three very well armed castles that are all on the edge of my kingdom's territory and right on the front of like two different kingdoms and it's like now I'm starting to get like the 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 greedy eyes, you know. Now I'm starting to get like, oh my god, if I capture Legata, and and if I capture this other city up here, oh, he's drunk with power. My 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 pow my my thief will be consolidated right in the middle of the kingdom, and I could leave the kingdom and declare myself my own king, like. Oh, I know, no, no, it's crazy. It's fucking yourself. crazy. But the other thing too is that like my relationship with the king is higher than like any other relationship. I've just done so much for him and like been such a like bro for the king and like I'm about to marry his brother. Like so I'm going to be like kind of high up in the in the pecking order of the current kingdom mm. that I'm in. Like it's fucking sick, man. This game is fucking sick. And there are a lot of mods out there already that are already very well developed and pretty robust. There's a Game of Thrones one. It's not called A Clash of Kings. I believe this one is called <laughs> I believe this one is called Realm of Thrones or something like that. Um, there's a few very highly rated like European overhauls, ones that make <laughs> the map actual like Europe um, and rename all the cities because because this game takes place in a fictional land called. Calradia. It's very much Europe and it's even kind of vaguely shaped like Europe and then the, you know, the the Mediterranean and then North Africa. Um, but it's it's all fictional. Um Yeah. Yeah, dude, like I, if anybody like I know we've been talking we talked about this game a lot a few years ago. Uh we all got a little into it for a minute when when we were playing the 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 Clash of Kings mod for the first one. Oh, oh shit. Oh, I'm fighting I'm fighting looters here and I'm just running them down with my with my lance and it's so unfair. It's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> it's so look, they're on foot and I'm just like boop. <laughs> Yeah, this like looks it, so like much better than like watching. Uh, it's so good. It's so good, man. It got me like, I, like, like, like. I had to start playing this game because I was getting really into like Game of Thrones again because I've been watching House of the Dragon, which is really good, by the way. Um, I went back and read all the Tales of Duncan Egg stories again just because I was like, ah, oh, like I need it. I need it in my veins. The best part uh, in the first Duncan Tale story. Um, the hedge knight, when he's at the tourney at Ashford Meadows and he's about to get in his first joust, his first tilt, he's thinking to himself, like he's psyching himself up and he's like, the lance is a part of my arm. It is my finger. 
my wooden <laughs> finger. And he's like charging towards the guy and he's like, I just have to touch you with my long wooden finger. And now like I think about that every time I'm running down like some peasant <laughs> in this fucking game. Oh, uh, it's so good. It's so good. I highly recommend if you're into this kind of thing, if you're into like strategies, uh, strategy games, uh, kingdom management simulators, even if you're in it for like things like commerce, you could do, you could go a completely different route and be like a merchant lord, you know, yeah. who isn't even that good at fighting. I just happen to be good at fighting, but you can be so, you can be really good at so many different things. Um, yeah. I, I kind of missed great. the boat on the first one, but I remember y'all being super, super into that, that first okay. game. And, and and like the first one was old at the time too, right? And it was yeah. rough. It was kind of hard to get into. This one is like good enough. You know what I'm saying, Nick? I think if you really wanted to try it, you you would enjoy it. I think I think it's good enough. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I I feel you. I mean, the cool thing too is like on the pile. <laughs> they they even like they even recently not like within the last year or so they did an update to like. To, to make the battlefields more dynamic, like as far as like rendering different battlefields to fight on. So they, so like all the different areas of the map now have like their own specific kind of battlefields. So before you would get in situations where it's like, oh, I'm on a bridge and I fight an army, but then when we actually go to simulate the battle, it's just on an open field. And it's like, that's kind of lame, right? Yeah. Now that now they've made it so that like oh that map will have a river running through it with a bridge and like you are fighting to take a bridge which is a very different kind of fight than fighting in an open field you know yeah like yeah. It, so so it feels good enough is is what I'm saying and I highly recommend it this game's a hell of a lot of fun well it's uh, sitting on the cusp of 1.0 so that's, that that in and of itself is very fucking tempting. great. It's like, fucking great. Like this, this game went on sale in GOG about a year and a half ago for like thirty dollars, and I picked it up then. Yeah, I've been waiting for it to hit one point oh. So like now is finally wait, my chance. To almost, I think it's the twenty fifth or over. something. But yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. Maybe I'll maybe I will check this out. I. Oh, it's a bad idea. It's too I'm many afraid, fucking. I'm games. afraid that Brad's not gonna play it. I'm uh, really worried. I mean, like, this is the kind of game he should play, and I don't think he's going to because, like, this game will just suck hours away from your life. I mean, he's he's already said he's not going to play it until there's a Game of Thrones mod for it. So oh, there is, and I even and then I, I'm not certain he he's got kids now. I know that's what I'm saying. Well, real shame. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. All right, I have one game, one more game to talk about, and then we'll cut to break. I'm, I won't talk about this a ton i actually talked about this game a little bit when we were talking about the uh steam next fest um oh a few months back i guess uh and it came out of one it came out of er, or, sorry it didn't come out of early access. it didn't have an early access period it just launched um while i was on vacation and i ended up downloading it on my steam deck and starting it while i was on the trip uh and i'm like almost almost 75 percent of the way through it i think um i'm talking about cultic i've been playing a lot of boomer shooters as 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 i say uh this year a lot in fact i've played three or four at this point um and guys i think this is the one i've been looking for, i've been looking for it i've been waiting to have that like and i've kind of enjoyed um all the games that i've played so far this year uh, as in, in this genre but this is the one every every game that i've played so far that i've talked about in the show whether it's forgive me father or proteus um, I feel like there was one other one that I'm forgetting. That's probably says something about it. Um, there's been something kind of off about it. Um, I did finish Proteus, by the way, um, which is the game I talked about on the last show. <clears throat> but this is the magic sauce. This is the this is. Uh, it, first of all, the game is split into two parts. So this is a this is a one man team uh, who is he, and he has decided to split the game into two separate chapters. So this is technically cult cultic chapter one, um, hmm. but it is 10 missions and I've been playing it for about eight, eight hours now. And I think I have three missions left to go somewhere in that. So there's a lot of content in here, but as far as like level design goes and just like feel of the guns and secrets and exploration, this game kind of has it all. And also it's coupled with this like really awesome visual style that I just, I just love and I'm eating it up and it's all about this guy who's going to he's investigating this cult but he's investi he's he's following the in the footsteps of a, of another investigator who got who was trying to find a missing person who got accidentally 
not uh he got actually he kind of like fell in with this cult trying to like find this person and now he's trying to find that person um so you're going in behind him and trying to figure out what happened and this game feels so fucking good to control man i can't even i can't get over this if you if you've ever played like uh you know doom or du- i get maybe dusk is maybe the the more uh recent example like this is this is, i think i think i like this more than dusk this game, the and Chris Davis is looking at me like, <laughs> those are those are strong words, man. Those are strong words. I, know, I feel like I feel like maybe I'm gonna regret saying that. Some people are gonna like lose their mind at me saying that because dusk dusk is fantastic, and it took there was a few there was a few uh, it took a few tries for me to really get into dusk before I finally kind of like it clicked. And honestly, dusk is probably the reason why I kind of latched onto the genre and like now I'm trying to play mad catch up and like play I'm playing all these games in the genre. But like this game kind of has it all. And it has the most robust uh, levels. Like a lot of these levels are very large. And I, I spent like 30 to 40 minutes in each one of these levels so far. And you get to the end and then it tells you how many secrets you found. And I'm like, I only found like three of seven. Where the fuck were the rest of those, those things? So there's lots of replayability. And like a lot of those secrets are, are really cleverly hidden. Um, and a lot of the maps have a lot of like intricate ways to kind of navigate around and 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 you can go different paths and just it's really it just it's really built for this like really crunchy exploration and i fucking love it but the guns and the feedback you have from those guns feels so good okay you get like dynamite and molotovs and you have a lighter so you can either throw the dynamite or you can which and then use it to like shoot at just if you shoot it on the ground it'll blow up obviously but that that can, that can be really challenging so you can actually you actually have to pull out your lighter light the dynamite time it and throw it um same thing with the molotov like it just feels very tactile in a way that I think a lot of the other boomer shooters that I've played this year don't. Um, and I'm also kind of coming off of Proteus, which I talked about last time. I'm playing this on hard. Um, and Proteus was really easy. <laughs> and a lot of that has to do with, you remember Brad talking about Proteus last time, where he was like, this is so bizarre because if you, when you die, you restart at the previous checkpoint, but it doesn't reload, like the enemies don't respawn. You're just kind of like navigating back to the area. And like after he said that, I was playing and I was like, this is, in fact, one of the weirdest design choices that I, I can possibly imagine. Because you never feel like you're like you're up against a wall because it's every enemy you you kill, no matter what, is is progress moving forward. Even if you die, that guy's gone, which is just a strange thing. Um, this game is definitely not like that. It. It's more traditional in its design. Um, and it's much fucking harder <laughs> playing on hard, but it's so satisfying. I can't recommend this game enough. Um, Nick, did you ever play the original Duke Nukem 3D? Yes, you did. Although I don't think I don't think I ever finished it. And I played it at a time when I was like right now I'm kind of like obsessed with this genre for what I don't even remember why at this point, but I'm kind of just like playing. I mean, I'm really kind of in this phase of like I really like these like retro uh style throwbacks and like even like horror games not 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 even necessarily with boomer shooters just with any like um, there's a lot of horror games i want to try that are just like built on this like it's supposed to like had this feel of like the playstation one era like i just and i i fucking love that for whatever reason so i'm well i'm I'm, I'm, I'm on that kick so 3d realms put out a updated version of duke Nukem 3d a couple years ago that brings it up to like modern specs and stuff um right you ought to I do Pick that up I, on a sale I think and I, check it out. I think I actually, I think it's already in my library, and it's it's definitely one of those things that I know I want to get to at some point. Um, but I'm tr- I'm just trying a bunch of new stuff, I guess, right now. Yeah. Um, and there's been some really good boomer shooters this year, and oh, yeah, this one, absolutely. this one, this is the one, man. I'm I'm so hmm. I'm so jazzed about this game. This I'm loving it, and, and it's also, and it has like a story with characters that's like easy to follow um and it's in it's very interesting <laughs> um and i'm finding myself in lots of combat scenarios where i'm like okay i have to manage my my ammo and very i have to be very very careful with like how i decide to move forward here because there's lots of enemies i only have ammo for this gun this gun this gun and this gun and none of those are ideal and it's just uh, it just makes you really stop and think before you move um and it, you know like proteus i think is great i think proteus plays fantastically and it feels really good and it looks really good but like it's always like move 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 you never stop moving always be shooting um which is cool in in one sense but like it, it's you don't really have to stop and think about much 
this game I'm constantly like doubling back and trying to find secrets and thinking before I, I put myself in a, in a combat scenario. And I really, 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 really like that. Um, um, it's, I have like, it's, I like, it's $10 hmm? on steam. Okay. Yes. Oh. It's 10 bucks on steam, man. But it's so, it, it, you know, that doesn't seem like, I mean, chapter two, when it comes out, will be 20 so the, or will be 10. So when, it, when that comes out and he said chapter two is going to be about as much content as chapter one. So you're looking at about twenty dollars total for the whole thing when it when he does get get that one done. Um, but like I said, this is already like eight hours of content for me. And if you're if you're really like into this genre um, and you want to like push it to its limits, you can spend twice that as much, probably find exploring and finding all the secrets and stuff because it, it's really well designed. Okay, important um, question then: How about mm-hmm. the soundtrack? Soundtrack's good. Soundtrack's very. I mean, it's it. You know, it I has don't think you the, can make a game like this and not give it a good soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, it's got like it's got like the heavy metal when 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 okay. shit gets crazy, and then in between those moments, it's very quiet. Like you, there are a lot of moments where you're just kind of exploring the woods and like finding stuff, and it's got like the the creepy like the ambient sounds and the wildlife, like the you know birds and whatever crickets, and and then all of a sudden you get attacked by a cultist, and the fucking heavy metal soundtrack kicks in. Which is cool, man. This game is so good. And it runs like a dream on the Steam Deck. Uh, if that's something that you care about. Oh man, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. This is the one. I mean, this, this is, is the you, one. Yeah, this is this is a single developer. A single person made this game. And he did yep. everything, evidently including the soundtrack. So I was like, that's, that's, that was why I was asking. That's but that's why he decided he's like, I'm gonna split it into two parts. And people are asking me why. It's like because I'm one person and I don't want this <laughs> game to take 20 years to get out so i'm gonna release part yeah. one which is the first half and then chapter two so um okay it's it's, ten, it's worth every penny so Wish far i, I, I love this yeah i do love this game all right um like i said guys jam pack show tonight we're gonna take a break when we come back we got news to talk about lots of news lots of big stuff happening silent hill resident evil bayonetta 3 final fantasy 16 a lot of big names to talk about so if you're listening at home don't go anywhere we will be right back All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. Um, like I said, we have lots and lots of news to cover. I want to start with something that I didn't actually really prepare for. I didn't make an overlay for it, but I know no one's excited to talk about it. I, too, am excited to talk about it. Um, and it happened today. Uh, Square Enix dropped a new trailer for Final Fantasy 16. That was pre-hype, mm-hmm. I think. Pre-hype? Crispy, I mean, you it, watched it? It definitely doesn't look bad. Which trailer? The new... Final Fantasy 16 trailer? Oh, I did watch that one. I yeah. was about to say, that looked like an hype as shit, didn't it? It's the one thing right, I haven't well, watched. The War movie. of the Icons. And it has that one guy with the deep voice who was in uh, The Green Knight and uh, Buster Scruggs. I can't remember his name. The guy who played The Green Knight? Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I could hear it. I could hear it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, so what are we thinking? Point. How are we feeling? I, it's, it's, uh, it's, it looks fucking dope. Looks fucking sick. Looks cool. Looks great. Shut up. Our, <laughs> from the perspective of wrong. someone, well, we're, so we have two different perspectives coming here because obviously Crispy uh, is balls deep in Final Fantasy fourteen. Loves Final Fantasy fourteen, rightfully so. Yeah, uh, the rest of us are kind of coming from it as they like haven't played Final Fantasy much since, or haven't loved Final Fantasy much since twelve. Right? I mean, at thirteen, fifteen, ten. Hey, that hey, was good. did you just I, try and throw 10 about? under the oh, bus man. with 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 13 and 15? No, he's saying 10 is the last one he liked. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, saying 12 okay. and 13 aren't good. Oh, OK. I played the well, true Final Fantasy 13. The fuck Which does is that what? mean? Which is what? It's called Lost Odyssey. Oh, you. This is bad. Use any, find an excuse you can to drop to name drop Lost Odyssey. Damn whatever. straight I, I will. This fucking guy. So Crispy is obviously excited. It's it, this game is is a lot of the creatives for, that were responsible for making Final Fantasy fourteen the success that it is are involved with this project, right? So that's the reason to be excited. And then we have Nolan, who watched the trailer today, who's also very excited, but coming at it from a perspective of you know, <sighs> didn't like fifteen, wasn't a big fan of thirteen, if I remember correctly, right? Um. So 
the I only ever really played the first thirteen. I didn't play the the other two. I mean, I the watched good ones. plenty of them. No, yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Fantasy thirteen, Lightning Returns. You know, to the game stuff over whatever. time. Thirteen uh, is more. You know, I could like I, there. I had a thought the other day. I was like, you know what? I don't know why. I, you ever get these like weird moods? Where you're like. I want to replay Final Fantasy 13 just like out of the blue for no. I was probably listening to the soundtrack because I had the soundtrack and I was like, I, is it just that you really want to soundtrack? Is it just that you want to run around the open world all day? You mean the open level, the one open level? <laughs> um, 13 had 13 had. OK, moments. so what I will say. <laughs> obviously did not get into 14. Because uh, it's an mm-hmm. MMO, mm-hmm. MMO, and I will not let myself do that um, because I will get sucked into it. Um, so, uh, Final Fantasy 13 and 15, so 15 and 13 are the last ones I played. I was not a fan of the story in 15, and obviously, a big part of Final Fantasy games are the story. I did not really care for where the story went. Um, I don't like that a lot of it was like, oh, if you want to get the full story, you got to watch this movie first. That movie wasn't very Um, good either. It wasn't. Um, I didn't like what they did with the characters. I don't want to go into detail. I know in some of the DLC, they fleshed out some stuff. I want to play a game. I want to get to know the characters. I want to like the characters. If some of them uh, have hardships, I want to care when that happens. You want to be invested. Exactly. I did not in 15. Honestly, I liked the characters and story in 13 more than I did in 15. That being said, I liked that 15 was more of an open world. I liked exploring. I liked the car. I liked the chocobos. It was better mechanically. The story was horrible, in my opinion. Everyone's entitled to their own. I don't know if the story in 16 is going to be good, uh, but I have enjoyed what I've seen so far of it. It's definitely leaning more towards um, going for that, like, gritty like political drama which honestly sure. i associate mostly that's, with that's like it's always been with final fantasy well i mean i, mean, I associate that i tend to it's associate a very more... like matsuno style political yeah. drama like it's it very definitely... very uh very game of thrones almost it seems very oh, reminiscent sure. yeah game of thrones it seems very reminiscent of vagrant story um mm-hmm. and and honestly i per, i tend to associate the more political stories with final fantasy 12 um sure. and you know, I think a lot of the stuff that came before that was very kind of like character driven and the stories were a little more personal and less grand, um, which mm-hmm. I tend to, I really enjoyed. But at the same time, I really, really, really like the tone this trailer struck. Um, the world seems pretty cool. And uh, but the one thing I will say is, albeit I watched this trailer and I was like, that looks hype as fuck. I'm ready for this. I want to love this game. It did not give me, and I said this in Discord earlier, and I was like, I don't know how else to describe this. It did not give me the Final Fantasy tingles. You know what I mean? Like the, mm. there were. I, I didn't get any chocobos. I didn't really get any like moogles or. You know they're gonna be some, there. I know they're gonna be there. They're and, all and gonna be there. We've seen screenshots of chocobos and stuff too. So you know it's in there. So I'm not worried about it. The trailer just didn't strike Dude. me. Like if, if they if that if that trailer had ended with a name other than Final Fantasy, it would have made total sense to me. Like, um, oh, I mean, there's not even a doubt. Like, I, I, I'm there, there's be... stuff in that trailer though that's so like like I, I don't know how you can look at like the art of like the different the 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 capital cities that they showed the that crystals. have like those impossibly huge crystals like coming <laughs> yeah. out of the ground next. Like that shit. Looks so fucking cool. It I looks like no, no, no. it, it looks totally like the coolest does. stuff in fourteen, but like taken up another notch. Like it's fucking crazy. It does. It definitely like I'm like again. I'm not, I, I'm trying to be positive here too because I I was really it was breathtaking. The trailer was breathtaking. I'm into it, and I know those elements that I'm looking for will be there. I know when I start playing this game, I'll be like, okay, this is Final Fantasy, yes. Um, but the trailer just definitely seemed like it was, it was going for. A di- something just different, which is good. I, th- I think Final Fantasy as a series needs something different. Um, For sure. So yeah, I'm I, the trailer is great. If you haven't watched it, go. It's like a four minute long trailer. It's very focused on story and characters and kingdoms within this new world. Yeah, yeah um, it is not a gameplay trailer for sure. 
there are little snippets of gameplay you can see you can get kind of a taste yeah, of like the action there's snippets of they gameplay of like at the end of like if yeah. written titan fighting that looks fun yeah 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 sick. and that's also shit that's gonna be like super super hype um that was also one of the biggest disappointments of 15 yeah right. the 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 lack of i played of summons final, how I played, infrequent they were i played mm-hmm. final fantasy 15 for like 50 hours and like for the amount of time that i played in that game and because of the way the summons worked in that game the only summon i ever saw was titan i played the whole game so, so like i don't, hours. I, only I don't saw know one summon. i don't know what kind of mechanical details they've put out so far but this one kind of makes it seem like you're gonna be transforming into summons like into the it, icons yeah, it kind of sounds I mean, that, that way. That was how a lot of games kind of worked before. Yeah, uh, I guess 15. I mean, more like, like, you'd, like you'd either transform into them or bring them into battle, and you would step yeah. aside as they fought. Yeah, yeah versus yeah, yeah. fifteen, where mean... randomly they would just kind of show up. Oh, hey, it's me. Uh, I'm gonna hear. Okay, the yeah. world's crazy. Uh, explosion, and I'm gone. And you'll see me again in like thirty hours, maybe. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think that. There's a measure of that as a reaction to how people felt about the summons in Seven Remake, because the the re, the summons in Seven Remake only showed up in very particular battles after you filled up a specific meter, and it just right. it didn't it, feel. I mean, right. the way the way summons have worked in the past few Final Fantasy games, like in Final Fantasy Thirteen, they were tied to specific characters that you couldn't interchange them and stuff, and Correct. they were very they were part of the story. They didn't seem like a huge component of the combat. They at least they didn't play that way because they weren't as good. Um, this definitely seems like kind of a reaction to a lot of those past games. Um, it's also the first time the summons have been like enormous. Like we're talking like kaiju level 15, size. Fifteen, summons. they were enormous. Well, Typically right. Typically speaking, like, in in nine too. Mm. I mean, like I'm talking about like Ifrit. It was always like kind of at your level. He's like. You don't remember yeah. Bahamut and Alexander in Night? No, of course I remember. I mean, Final they F- were hey, big bro, for sure, F- bro. Final Fantasy Nine is like my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time. Of course I remember. Don't I'm just saying, like, not question. even even Ifrit in this game is like the size of like a skyscraper. Like he's enormous. He's a kaiju. They're all kaiju. I'm yeah. pretty excited to see kind of how, what how crazy they're gonna go with the summons. Anyways, the point is. There's a new trailer out there. It looks great. They're still aiming for summer 2023. Proving once again, 2023 looks like it's going to be an absolute fucking bonkers bananas year <sighs> for releases. Um, so the check that out. The, yep, the, the new 2016. The new 2007. Yep. Uh, that's going to be one of them years, I think. I don't um, even remember 2007. Mm, you know, honestly, I consider 2018 to be up there too, but whatever. That's the, that's a whole other discussion. Also, shout out to Frey, him and chat who just uh, subscribed for 16 months. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So I want to move on to the other big news, obviously. Um, <laughs> so I'm a big Silent Hill fan. Silent no. Hill. Yes. Yeah, I know. Surprising, right? Really? And um, we've been kind of waiting. Uh, obviously, Konami, you know, the source of a lot of our ire over the past decade. Um, for sure. Has seemingly, seemingly stepped out of the game business and focused on pachinko machines for a long time. They canceled Silent Hills. You know, they get, you know, Castlevania has been um, in the hands of Mercury Steam. And then they kind of stopped doing those games, too. And Metal Gear, you know, Metal Gear, their whole their whole approach to game development has been very hands off. And they've shifted focus. Well, it's become a we don't care about gamers. We care about money. Right. Um, and Pachinko Machines bring in the money. So, you know, obviously a lot of fuck you, fuck you the weeks go to Konami over the past decade. And there's been rumors uh, about bringing back Silent Hill for a long time. In fact, there's been lots of rumors, um, lots of rumored projects, a lot of rumors that have been so far as to say this game is being made by this studio um, and it exists and it's out there and we know it. Um, and Norman and, Reedus. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then last week, kind of out of the blue, Konami was like, we're finally doing it. We're going to pull the curtain off of Silent Hill, the future of Silent Hill, we're bringing it back, we're rebooting the franchise, so to speak, um, and we're going to do a whole event for it. Uh, and they did a 50-minute event focused on Silent Hill, which, holy shit, as someone who's been waiting for 10 years at this point, I think, uh, for a new Silent Hill game and had nothing 
to suddenly get 50 minutes of announcements related to this franchise, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's like whiplash. Um, and walking away from this event, I am excited. I am also in equal measure, maybe, um, nervous. Uh, because one thing I think is apparent after watching this thing is that they are getting back into game development, but they seem to be bringing this franchise back. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do this with other things like Castlevania and Metal Gear Solid eventually too. They seem to be like, we're going to bring these franchises back by making partnerships with outside studios and we are going to lend creative talent from those original studios. We're going to bring it back, but we don't want to do any work. I mean, they, they only I mean, it, have it, one internal team at this point. I'm not even certain that internal team exists anymore. Right. So what we're getting, they announced, so let's get right to it. They announced five major things, I would say. I mean, they also talked about merchandise. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend any time talking about fucking Silent Hill merchandise. But they don't. do. Merchandise look kind of good. Yes. Okay, sure, whatever. I, but like, if you want to know more about the merchandise, go check out the store. There's figures and skateboards and shit. I don't, it's, it was weird. They announced three games from three different studios, none of which I think are based in Japan. Oh, actually, the, the, one of them is. Um, they announced a new movie based on Silent Hill 2 from the original director who did that first movie, which is quite honestly considered one of the better video game adaptations ever. I mean, it, I mean, still by such that standards, pretty low bar, right? But like that movie, I consider that movie pretty good. Wh whatever. They're making a sequel to to that based on Silent Hill 2 the original director has returned to do that movie um which if you remember the second movie they made after that was not this director and it was terrible um so they're bringing him back they're making another movie which is cool I guess uh but I don't really want to talk about that and they announced this weird thing called Silent Hill Ascension which is essentially um a like ARG like interactive story that's going to be live 24 7 for a certain period of time and you can in, you can help shape the story and once it's over it's over that it's like an event cool. i mean it, it's it sounds cool i guess from a creative perspective it sounds like a thing cool thing but i can't help but feel like it's not gonna be as you know mind-blowing as they're making it sound like i i don't know i'm super skeptical about this thing in fact of everything they announced because i was like there's gonna be one of those things they're gonna announce here that's gonna be like kind of cringe right it's konami like they can't have a thing like this without any, some kind of cringe i was like there's gonna be something that's gonna make me go "Ooh, i don't know if that's a good idea and that was it for me that was it i was like i don't i'm not all in on this i don't really care if this thing if this thing is bad whatever i'm kind of expecting it to be bad if it's cool awesome but I, I don't have a lot of faith in it. But the three games they announced, three full, fully-fledged Silent Hill games have now been announced, one of which, the first one, is long been rumored. Everything that was rumored is true. <laughs> it is a full-blown remake from the ground up of Silent Hill 2, which is in my top five games of all time, from Bloober Team, the, the team behind Layers of Fear and Observer and The Medium and Blair Witch. Um, a very divisive horror developer. Uh, I would say this, because I know there's been a lot of conversation, even in our Discord about it. Divisive because of the medium. If you take a medium out of the equation, they are a solid horror developer that has actually done really impressive stuff with small budgets, because all of their games have been very small budget. This is obviously going to be their biggest project. Konami's throwing a lot of money at this. You can tell pretty quickly watching this trailer that this is bigger than any project they've ever done. You read the details about what they're going for. It's bigger than anything they've ever done. For From my perspective, they are the new Mercury Steam of horror games. Not necessarily sure. a bad thing, but they are fairly notorious. But they're no. not. But like, the, They're well, not even notorious. Like People play Layers of Fear, and for, that was actually pretty popular for a while. Yeah, uh, I don't know much about Layers of Fear 2 whatever they made observer which is a really cool like cyberpunk sci-fi horror game yeah. that had rutger hauer and it like it was it was <laughs> that their claim it, to fame i mean it was a it was a very blade runner type 
uh, For sure. experience, I suppose. But it was horror. It was a horror game, straight up. And it, it was really creative, but also done with a very modest budget. Blair Witch was on my top 10 games of the year. I know I'm kind of a... Uh, I know I kind of champion that yeah. game. I'm like one of the only people that champions that game. I know you're really into that game, but that game's reputation is a bit more... Uh, divisive. But even then... <clears throat> Sure, but I think, but I think when people talk about Bloober being a divisive horror, or like what Chris Davis just said about Bloober, I think a lot of it stems from the medium. There's been a lot of conversation about that game. That game, from a technical standpoint, uh, mechanically speaking, was kind of ambitious, and none of their ideas really panned out the way I think they hoped it would. And then on top of that, it had a story that was not very memorable, not very good. And on top of that, there is an element of the story that, to be honest. I went back and refreshed myself on the story today. I read the entire synopsis of it. It's very controversial, apparently, because some people interpret it as being. A lot of people say, or some people say that the theme of that game seems to imply that people with mental illness should die. Uh, hmm. Which I did not have that takeaway when I played it. I'm not saying they're wrong. I just know that when I played it, that is definitely not something that went through my head. I read the synopsis of the story today to remind myself of what happened in that game. I don't really see how they got there, but I also have not done a ton of research. I'm sure there is reasoning behind this. And if, and I know there's a, uh, there's a reset era thread about this that you can find that goes into great detail of it. And I'm not saying they're wrong, but I do think based on my experience with it, having played the game, I think is maybe a bit of a stretch, but I think that is where they're getting this notorious reputation from. But regardless of all that, they are now making a complete ground-up remake of Resident Evil 2 with Konami's backing. Akira Yamaoka is involved with this project. He, not only is he the composer of all the Silent Hill games and a, an integral component of like what makes this, this series great, but he's also, he was also heavily involved with the creative process in Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, and, and 4, I believe. And beyond that, I think he was mostly just involved with making music. Um, also, also, the word on the street is that Konami has a very tight leash on Bloober Team on this remake. I um, mean, they, I feel like they would kind of have to because Silent Hill Two is widely considered to be I, I a goat. We if you like horror games, it's a goat. Like it's 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 an incredible game with a, a very memorable story that people cherish. I thought we didn't um, trust Konami decision making, so why is them having a tight leash a good thing? I think having a tight leash on Bloober Team is a good thing, especially con given the concerns people have about the medium and like the story that they were trying to tell. Because the story is a huge component of what Silent Hill, what makes Silent yeah, Hill Two so right. famous. And I'm sure there's going to be tweaks to it, but all, any of those tweaks that they make are probably going to have to go through creatives. I'm not. Konami to I'm not them. trying to be antagonistic here, but really. But you're going to. <laughs> like, no, I'm not. But like, but like, think about it, okay? Like. Like, the complaints people had with, like, the medium was, like, on this thematic level, right? Yes. This, like, problematic theming of the story. Like, you think mm -hmm. Konami's going to be like, oh, I don't know about this. This seems a little problem. Like, you think they're even going to, like, no, 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 no. be I, able I, to I, fucking I, clock something like that? No, like, not necessarily. Like, but I, like I, what I, I'm I saying is think... I don't think that their control is the kind of control <laughs> that Bloober Team would benefit from. You know what, what I mean? What I'm saying is, I, I, I don't think this game is going to drift too far away from the original story, period. Um, oh, no. What if it makes people realize that they don't like the original? <laughs> I don't think that's possible. The, no, the no, no, no. The, the original's a classic. Um, and the things that make me excited about this project, when you take Bloober out of the equation, I'm not even talking about... I'm just talking about from the, 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 desi the design doc for this game, right? They're building what is essentially an open world Silent Hill game that where you can explore the entirety of Silent Hill without loading. Pretty cool. And that's kind of a big deal. That's never really been done before. For sure. And that's honestly they came they didn't really uh I wouldn't say they came close to it, but like the reason why I love Downpour so much is because of how open it is and how much freedom you have to explore kind of at your own pace and go and do things in your own order, um, and how kind of organic everything felt. I love that about that. And if they can if they can achieve that with this remake of Silent Hill 2, which is again one of my favorite games of all time, it sounds like a dream project. I am a little nervous because Bloober is I don't want to say divisive, but I want to say 
bunch of weirdos. Not, they haven't. I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Yeah, wrong. A bunch. They I haven't had a killer weird. app yet. I do. They don't. Ha, they haven't had a quote unquote killer app because they haven't had a budget to allow them, I think, to make a killer app yet. Mm -hmm. This 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 game, they have a lot of resources behind it. It shows in the trailer. I think this game looks. I mean, personally, I think it looks phenomenal. It, it, it um, is an Unreal Engine 5 game, we should mention. Unreal Engine 5. That shot where he walks out of the, the opening shot of Silent Hill 2 is is famous. Like hit, like him looking in the mirror, walking out of the of the, the trucks of the, the, the rest station bathroom and s s overlooking Silent Hill is iconic. And when that right, when that's that the scene of the came, game. When that scene came up in that trailer, I was like, holy shit, this looks fucking phenomenal. Um kind of took my breath away. I'm very, very excited about it. Um the the thing and I, and I think I, is is potentially and, and this wasn't something they even showed in the in any of the presentation, but like one of the things that I think is really kind of kind of opened people's eyes up to the franchise back in the mid to late 2000s when the series was still going on downpour and homecoming, I think it was, was the film instilled this idea of the real time world transition. Yeah. Um, people really like that. And I really like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a cool element that it just couldn't really do with the technology back. They, the they couldn't, and... but I think they can do it now in this. And if they did well, yeah. that in this, with this technology, that'll be fucking well, cool. They're, I mean, they did elements of that in the medium. Like one of the cool things about the medium, if, if nothing else is it almost seems like they were preparing the cool the thing about the medium. They were preparing the tech that they're going to need to, to make a Silent Hill game. The story didn't pan out, and I think their dual world system that came up with the medium was just not as impressive or as exciting as I think they were building it to be. But the but the the real time transitions that are kind of what you see in a Silent Hill game were impressive and really cool, and I think we're going to see that here. That goes back to them talking about making an open Silent Hill that with no loading. So you're going to have these moments where it's going to everything's going to kind of deteriorate, and you're going to end up in the the other side, the other world version of Silent Hill, right? And that's going to with no loading, that kind of implies it's going to have to happen in real time. I fully expect that to be in this game. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. It's one of my favorite games of all time. But hey, man, that's kind of exciting in itself. If, if it fails, it fails. I think this is going to be a make or break project for Bloober. If they do do well on this, it's going to make the, it's going to make that their name is made. I think if they somehow fuck this up, I don't think they're ever going to get people to trust them again. Um, at least not with a project like this and the worst case scenario, they, it fails and we're right back in the same situation we are right now. Silent Hill two, where you can, you can go out and play the original Silent Hill two. If you're willing to jump through the hoops that you need to do to play it. Um, and you can play that game and it's still a classic. I hope this game succeeds. I'm a little nervous about it, but also that's kind of exciting in and of itself. So count me in. Uh, the second project they announced was also heavily rumored and interesting. It's an Annapurna published project from No Code, which is the team that made Observation, um, which was a very narrative. I played that game. It's a very narrative driven, like space kind, kind of space horror game. Um, cool. Very cool game. Very cool atmosphere. And, you know, doing some zero G stuff and no combat, just all about exploring that space station and, have to see having this like story unfold in front of you. I feel like that's kind of what this game is going to be. It's called Silent Hill Townfall. It was a teaser trailer. They didn't show much, but it is going to be a narrative heavy. So I'm I'm even kind of sitting here thinking there's rumors that it's episodic too, but I'm not sure if that's been that's been confirmed or anything. Yeah. Yet. I don't also, think it's been confirmed. I don't know if I'm crazy, but like some of the stuff they were showing in that teaser made me think like at first was like is this going to be like FMV or some shit? Like, it could be. It could be. That would be interesting. <clears throat> um, but, but real quick, um, Nick, you didn't mention that the game they made before Obser Observation was called Stories Untold. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Mm, that's these guys? Yes. Oh, shit. I think the ending of Stories Untold is kind of lame, but that game was cool. Yeah, and I mean, watching this trailer, I was I was getting some vibes of like, Seems kind so of this, cool. so this is kind of the first um this is the first thing that popped up in this presentation that made you that made me kind of go okay they're branching out with Silent Hill and they're trying to do some different stuff which as as someone who I mean I love Silent Hill it's kind of a you know it's it had a rocky history 
Um, but they've always been very shackled to the original concept. And this seems like the first thing where they're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to let somebody do something fresh with this and see where it goes. So we don't, we know next to nothing about this project other than who's developing it. And the fact that it's going to be very narrative heavy, heavy. Yeah. But this, um, but I'm this kind also of thinking, like life is strange just in terms of like, that's the kind of like story you're controlling, right? Like it's, it is not, I'm, I'm not anticipating combat. I'm just anticipating like moving a character through an environment triggering maybe dialogue and making decisions and that's kind of how you play the game that's my guess to, um, to to me based on the very very limited information we glean from the the trailer for this game it makes me think that they're like taking a a episodic approach to silent hill for the room um maybe. because that's kind of what stories and told in a way was if correct me if i'm wrong chris um, because it, it was like these little vignette it was, stories. It was well, episodic. Uh, stories um, untold. Stories untold was episodic. Yeah, mm-hmm. but also Crispy doesn't have the history of Silent Hill Four. Um, oh yeah, I don't and I think that. that I think he needs to be able to make that judgment for you, Chris Davis. Okay. Um, I'll just say yes. There we go. <laughs> I trust your judgment, Chris Davis. You know what would have made? Know. You know what would have made Silent Hill Four: The Room even better? What? A second room. <laughs> the rooms. <laughs> there were multiple rooms actually in that game. There Anyways, were. so this is cool. We know next to nothing about it, but it's the first like sign. Okay, they're trying some new stuff, and it, I've been following. Um, so obviously, so if you're familiar with Dusk Golem on Twitter, he's kind of infamous for like leaking a lot of stuff that turns out to be true, largely mm-hmm. having to do with like horror franchises. So yeah. he leaked a lot of resident. I keep saying leaked. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of throwing him under the bus here, but I guess that's what it is. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil, he was re- like, he kind of was the one who outed Resident Evil Village weeks before it was actually announced. He like the werewolf thing and the villa, the mount, you know, like a lot of details. Same thing with all mm-hmm. these Silent Hill projects. I've been following him very, very closely with, with all this. Um, and he's talked a lot about how the original development team on Silent Hill back in the back in the day when Team Silent was still a thing, that after, when they were making the first four games, they were trying to convince Konami to like let them break free of the kind of the mold of Silent Hill one and two and like get away from Silent Hill as a town to like branch out and try new things that thematically tie back into it. Yeah. And this Mm -hmm. seems like maybe the first time like Konami's finally like, okay, we're going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's uh, the the overarching theme of this entire presentation to me felt like Konami saying, okay, we're going to get back into Silent Hill and we want to respect the original source material we made with a remake of two. Also because we get a shit ton of money off it. But we kind of want to get away from the concept of Silent Hill being a town, like the 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 background area for the this franchise, and instead embrace a more anthology aspect of of, of what this franchise could be. It seems like they want to expand the lore in some unexpected directions, which is cool. well, well not even like have it the lore be of Silent Hill being an overarching thing across the entire franchise, but like have Silent Hill be a anthology of stories with these central themes. Right. Which is, you know, and there's rumors and Dust Golem has been talking about this a lot, saying that there are other games like Townfall from other developers that are working that are being worked on right now that are like very different, very isolated, very narrative heavy. And that there's like, apparently there's like several projects that weren't even announced at this thing. So there's a lot of Silent Hill stuff being developed. <laughs> there, um, so but, in, in, in that regard, I do want to mention is that, so as, as leading up to the presentation, which was, was a botched presentation, by the way, because it was supposed to go live on YouTube as a premiere and they just decided they accidentally released the entire mm-hmm. thing for people to watch. So mm-hmm. this, people skip through it. Um, as part of the lead up to that, there was metadata that leaked as to what were the key terms that would get flagged in YouTube and things like that. One of the, one of the things was Silent Hill 2 Remake Part 1, which made people speculate mm-hmm. that maybe they're splitting Silent Hill 2 Remake into multiple games. Which but does, not seem, does not seem to be the case at this point. May, may not be. We're, we're not for certain at this point. I mean, we don't even know an actual release date for Silent Hill I mean, Hill the fact that you can pre-order the game already on Steam and it doesn't yeah. say anything about it being Part 1, I think, we're sa- I exactly. think it's safe to say it's... But one thing in the me- in the metadata that that was uh, 
not mentioned in the presentation and may be held back for a Sony event because this a lot of the bankrolling for the whole Silent Hill re- revamp is Sony putting money towards it. That's why they have mm-hmm. a, a year of exclusivity towards Silent Hill. Um, there was a mention of a product called Silent Hill, the short message. Hmm. Oh, the, the short message was that there was a leak weeks ago or actually months ago at this point. There's even yeah. screenshots of it out there. And there's like it was it was rated in Korea, I think. So like it's it's out, it's it's a thing. Nothing well, that they mm-hmm. showed here was this game. And apparently it's supposed to be a playable teaser for another project. Yeah. Like, that... like a, like a PT two, but not called that. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> which that was not, that was not at this event, which I'm shocked by, but they closed this event by announcing the craziest project of the whole thing, which I'm very excited about. The most called interesting. Silent, the very easily, the most interesting silent Hill F. And there's a whole, you can go down a huge rabbit hole trying to figure out what the, what the F means. Um, I'm mm, not going to, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not yeah, obviously friendship, um, but it is it is being developed by a studio called Neo Boards Entertainment, which has a, they're responsible for Resident Evil Reverse. Um, that they, they've that's, been doing that's... a lot of Capcom support stuff. They did Reverse. They worked on Resistance. Um, they helped out on uh, Devil May Cry Five and a few other things. On um, Warlords they've been mainly Remastered. a support studio. Yeah, they also worked on the Avengers game. Um, yes. and, uh, and they, they contributed to Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake. So they've been contributing to a lot, but now they're a lead developer on this project. Um, and there's two, um, famous authors of horror mangas, I guess. Yes. Right? So mm-hmm. the, the, the most prominent writer on this project, his, his pen name is Ryukishi 07. Now Ryukishi 07 is known for, uh, a bunch of works, but the, the most famous work is a franchise called Higurashi When They Cry, which is a mm. big series that's been going on for over tw- almost 20 years now of starting out as an audio drama and then a visual novel and then a pair of anime series and some games. And it's all a it's all centered around centered around a theme of a, a small rural Japanese town in the early 1980s. Um, and I won't spoil it for you, but it's all about huge themes of psychological horror set within time loops and, and, and people murdering each other based on exposure to stuff in the town. It's, it's, it's fucking bonkers and it is a terrifying show or in whatever, or whatever aspect you choose to experience this franchise. But honestly, for silent Hill, Kind of perfect. This is the perfect writer to get on this on on this franchise. Also, I think it's also worth mentioning that uh, uh, Junji Ito, I think, is his name, right? Junji mm-hmm. Ito. He's not. He's not involved with this project, but he is pretty much confirmed to be working on a Silent Hill project. What? And I think a lot of people theorize that it's that the short message game that was not announced. Well, that's yeah, going to be event. the best one. <laughs> but uh, but but this Silent Hill F thing looks fascinating um because it's it's set in 1960s japan uh so obviously getting out of silent hill proper um there's a lot of there's a whole third i i, I do encourage you to read I'll, maybe i'll post in the show notes there's a link to dust golem's thread he did today where he broke down that entire trailer and like analyzed the shit out of it and even came up with some theories as to how it might still tie back to silent hill uh, which mm-hmm. has a lot to do with the flowers that are showing up in this trailer mm. but there's a lot of imagery of like uh, a, a schoolgirl in feudal, uh, not in feudal, 1960s Japan. Uh, there's lots of uh, flower, like different kinds of flowers in the trailer, and there's a scarecrow that seems to have some s- significance, and um, a lot of like body horror stuff, like like holes in arms, and <laughs> her face falls off, and there's holes in the Isn't face. That your and, favorite, Nick? It's oh very god, gory. it scares the sh- it scares the shit out of me. But man, this trailer is, ooh, it's beautiful. I'm. And it's it is so out of left field for Silent Hill. I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but God, I cannot wait to find out more about this project. It looks crazy. Um, and it is not at all what I was expecting to be announced at this thing. Um, for sure. so that's kind of where we're at right now with Silent Hill. I know it's a lot to cover, um, but damn. Silent Hill fans, horror fans are eating good these days. And... Um, I can't believe I can't I just I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I cannot believe this is happening. That's all I'm saying. It I is. can't believe this is happening. Uh, I'm very excited. So 
we can move on from that. I'm sure we'll talk about it more in the future as more stuff comes to light and we get closer to the Silent Hill 2 apparently is the first game of these that are going to be is closest to release. I would imagine that's going to be sometime Q1, Q2 of next year at this point. Uh, considering can, can you can I, already order it probably. and shit. Can I just <clears throat> mention how I understand the financial aspect and business aspect of focusing your first big comeback Silent Hill title to be a remake of 2. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that in my in my head that mathematically makes sense financially, but fan wise, I feel like that is a particularly dangerous thing to try. Oh sure, it's, it's especially absolutely. if you're going with with Bloober. I mean, again, mm -hmm. we we can talk about blue go in circles about them all day. But what in, in my it's, conversations it's not, with. It's people. taking a huge break. It's a gamble. It is a yeah. huge fucking gamble. I mean, I think the I think the better thing for them to have done would have been to try and remake the original Silent Hill, a game it that it more. is a game that is only available on PS One and it was a remake for the Wii, obviously, mm -hmm. which was which was weird in and of itself. I think, that, I think that Wii remake is or not remake, but like reimagining is maybe the reason why they didn't do that because. It's kind of already been done. Not exactly, but kind yeah. of. But I think um, it would have been better if they would have instead focused on remaking the first Silent Hill and then earn up the fan uh, trust from that project to do Silent Hill 2. Because Silent Hill 2 is well and beyond the, the most beloved of the franchise. Without a doubt. Without a yeah. doubt. It's a huge right. gamble. Um, I'm, But also, I'd like, to, I'd like to think this is me being a little optimistic you know me i'm kind of a positive dude no it's probably it's gonna get me in trouble one day but i'm i like to think this is that this is their them demonstrating that they have faith in this project which hopefully has some weight hopefully means something if this is the first foot they're gonna put forward for this reboot of silent hill i'm hoping that indicates that they have faith in it um and that sure. it's in, they're impressed by it um, otherwise, I don't think they would be making this their first outing. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. it, real quick, wanna, we also got to look at Resident Evil 4 Remake today. I just want to get your first take on this. If uh, Is there much to say about it? I mean, they fucked we're it! All... They fucked it up! They, they, <laughs> they did not fucked it. Resident Evil 4, the best Resident <laughs> Evil, and they fucked it. Why do you, why do you say that, Crispy? He looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does look pretty good, doesn't it? That's uh, supposed to look that good. Yeah, That's supposed to look wallet. that good. Um, but Resident Evil hey, 4 is a mid-tier game. What? <laughs> Damn. I, I feel like Crispy is... It's is supposed just... to be kind of lame after a few hours. To, to be fair, Crispy had not played Resident Evil 4 until 15 <laughs> years after it came out. So oh, that's true. Ain't wrong. That's true. I waited the perfect uh, amount of time. But hey, it's cool. It's coming out in March, and we got a first look at it. We got a story trailer, some gameplay of it. Game. They confirmed things like, um, uh, like the drop kick or the the roundhouse kicks are back. The uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the stuff that, that that kind of makes Resident Evil Four an action game, um, uh, seem to be intact here, which I feel mm -hmm. ob it seems obvious to me. Like removing that stuff would be kind of a bad idea, for sure. Um, you know, but you know, the trailer today got lots got looks at like. Uh, character like the characters like Ashley, Luis, uh, 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 Salazar. He's bet he's in the game. So if you were worried they were gonna pull some of the crazier <laughs> elements out of the game, that's no. not the case. Um, they announced another one of those crazy GameStop collectors edition, which I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do. I don't even have he space for another that. fucking. I got. I don't have enough space for another Resident uh -huh. Evil statue, and I already have a Leon statue up there from Resident you can Evil. Just 2 build remake. a new shelf. But um. Five dollars yeah, at, at Home Depot. Build a new shelf. You think I built this one? You not, could. Not happening. No one can do it. No one does woodwork. Build, build me a shelf. Um, sure. Yeah, I don't know. This looks pretty cool. I'm pretty fucking jazz. We don't really know much beyond. They didn't spend a lot of time. I don't think talking about a lot of the specifics, but it looks pretty yeah. faithful. And uh, which Resident Evil Two remake was pretty faithful, but like also felt fresh. I, I, I kind of like that first look, you get a first look at kind of the open area, the first area, the, the town where you fight the, the first um, oh, enemies village. in the, the, ch the village. Yeah, the village with the, the chainsaw dudes. You get a first, mm -hmm. it looks very, 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 very like the layout looks the same, um, but obviously similar just looks, layout, but it definitely obviously looks a lot more polished. There's a lot yeah, more detail. Yeah. 
it, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where you, you, we have obviously vivid memories of Resident Evil 4. But then when you go back and actually look at it, it's super simple and plain. And this is like it feels like a real world. And that is the benefit you get from like remakes and stuff is obviously they, they can add a lot more to it. So it right. does feel more realistic, which also can obviously add a little more horror to it, because when there is a box and a door and a wall and a person there, you know, obviously that person sticks out. But when there's so many little intricate details like it, it just it feels more intense, way, way yeah. more intense and organic. And and, mm-hmm. you know, I need need I remind needless to remind anybody, but like Resident Evil 2 remake was. Um, crazy good, like crazy good yeah. um, Resident Evil 3 remake, pretty good. <laughs> OK, I, right. pretty good. I'm going to give it that pretty good. I was, was um, going to get after you. But, uh, you know, this is the next logical step. And Resident Evil 4 is beloved. We're literally talking about remakes of two of the most beloved horror games sure. of all time on the same yes. podcast. And they're both launching probably within a few months of each other. It's crazy. And then Dead Space is also getting a remake <laughs> coming out. In January. Like, what is happening right now? Like we're ha- is this like a horror renaissance? It's just like we have to redo everything again because we're bringing yeah. it back, baby. We're re- we're re- rebooting this bitch. If that gets us um, more content, okay, sure. As long as you're treating I, it with love. I love all these games, and I think they look amazing, and I'm I'm pretty stoked. Can, can um, I so can lastly, I point out two things from the Resident Evil presentation? Um, sure. Or Re- Resident Evil Four specifically. The first one, um, they're adding a parry mechanic. Um, mm-hmm. to to combat in the game, um, there there's there's it, there was a bunch there was a big preview event that happened with a bunch of journalists that today and a lot a lot of videos are going out talking about you know stuff, um, but in the preview stuff. footage you can see uh, uh multiple instances of a parry being done there, and uh it looks like there's no on screen prompt it looks very clean, um but it's all based around your knife, um. Hmm. That that's uh, very prominent in this, and what it makes me think is that they look they they took the the dodge prompt mechanic from the Resident Evil Three remake. How it was it was very dynamic, and it just you you had to instinctively learn exactly when to activate it to get the right roll and to get the slowdown and, and the to make it feel good. I think they took that trigger timing and implemented it into this game. Um, well, I mean, and, that would be wise. I mean, to like to take elements that worked in all these projects as yeah. and kind of like layer them as they go seems like a logical step. But but the knife feels it, it the knife appears to be like a a much more emphasized aspect of this game now. Um like in 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 certain as and certain footage you see uh Leon get grabbed by Ganado. And sure, there is the button mash prompt to uh, push away an enemy, but there's also a secondary prompt to use your knife as a counter. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, in several defense sequences, you see like Leon gets cornered by the chainsaw guy, um, and he mm-hmm. uses his knife to defend himself. And from what I understand from uh, journalists in, of the preview event, evidently you can upgrade the knife. And use the knife for different aspects. Ooh, interesting. Of That's pretty cool. You're saying Leon brought a knife to a chainsaw fight? Yes, and evidently survived. So That's um, cool, man. The, I'm the, excited. The, the other thing I want to mention about Resident Evil 4 specifically is that the sound design sounds fucking excellent. The the your weapons feel sound so good. The Well that the, that shouldn't be surprising considering what they did with Resident Evil 2 and 3. But like I, by by comparison though just thinking about it, it feels night and day. It sounds so much better than those in this one. I'm going like, to be your, honest. Your I pistol sounds powerful. Your old... shotgun sounds powerful. The chainsaw sounds terrifying. The Ganados have so much more variety to their vocal lines and what they say. Like, it their sounds am, uh, so good. I, I'm going to be honest. I have not. And this is mostly just because I was super busy after work today. I haven't had a chance to watch all of the stuff from this event. So I'm going to catch up afterwards. I've only watched the story trailer so far. Still very exciting. All right, absolutely. Uh, sure. Last news topic tonight, and then we can do we can wrap up. Um, and I don't know how much we want to talk about this, but this has been a huge deal this past week. Um, the original voice actress who plays Bayonetta, we already knew in Bayonetta three she was not returning to reprise her role. 
Uh, in fact, Jennifer Hale uh, is doing the voice of Bayonetta in Bayonetta 3. The original actress, uh, Helena Taylor, I want to say, is right, that right? Helena yes, Taylor? Yes, sounds right. Um, came out and finally kind of revealed why she didn't return to, to reprise her role. Um, and it's, you know, it's caused kind of a circus. Uh, she released a video saying that she didn't, she, she was offered, according to the original video, she was offered a flat rate of $4,000 to reprise her role as Bayonetta in Bayonetta 3, which seems ridiculously low. And she went on to say that she, she made a counter offer. They rejected it. Things fell apart. She did not, she obviously did not return to do the voice. And then she called for a boycott of the game. Um, which based on her original video seemed like maybe an appropriate thing to do because obviously you want to advocate for the talent who put together these games to be compensated for their work and $4,000 for a starring role in a, in a, in a major franchise seems criminal. Um, yeah. After she released that video, obviously people were like, Oh my God, this is so fucked up. Hideki Kami has started commenting on it. Uh, to the point where I think Platinum took his phone away, or I even yeah. saw like maybe his Twitter account got like taken down or something. I don't know. What? Maybe what he just got was... mad of all the people tweeting at him in English. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he, He'll he block you. several years ago he decided that he just doesn't want to deal with uh, English speakers anymore. So he just blocks anyone that speaks English to him on Twitter. And that seems uh, racist. <laughs> Well, he's, I mean, no, that, that's what happened. That's what he's he was, a little you know, xenophobic about it, though, because he just calls people who speak Eng English insects. Yeah, no, he, he, he's wow. a character on Twitter, but like whatever. Yeah. So what? What but happened that was, was his bit. it was funny. That so was his bit. After after he after he uh, after Helena Taylor's videos went viral, people started tweeting at him, and he was blocking and and unfollowing mm -hmm. or, or just blocking everyone as so fast. That Twitter support actually thought that somebody had bot. hijacked his account or something, so they they put in protected status. Okay, so that so that's what made it look like he was temporary. He's back at this point, I assume, right? Yeah. On Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yes. I thought, um, they, I thought after the protected status thing, they straight up deleted his account. I think that was like a temporary thing, but I'm fairly certain he is back. Maybe somebody mm -hmm. in chat can confirm whether he's back or not. The point mm -hmm. is, um, he adamantly denied the claims. Um, and then Bloomberg has done some some investigative reporting and, and released oh, yeah. some subsequent articles now saying that yeah. the the original offer to Helena, Helena Taylor was four thousand dollars per session for up to five sessions, I think. Hmm. Um, Something like and that. I, well, and I or the math eventually somehow worked out to she was actually being offered about fifteen thousand dollars for the role, which, to be honest, still I mean, here's here's the problem. Here's why I don't really want to talk about it too in depth. Because I don't know. I don't think I'm qualified. I'm obviously not a voice it. actor. I don't think any of us here are super qualified to talk about like what's fair, what's not fair, how it even works. Like it He's, seems like a very if you're not familiar with the, that side of the business, you just the, don't know. The, the, I don't know the contracts that are put towards the voice actors in this industry can be very convoluted. A lot of them, most of them, are, are held behind NDA, so you never figure out. You never know what kind of amounts we're talking about. And the only times you ever hear about amounts are when there's actors crying foul. Like, right. uh, like for example, uh, the guy who played Roman Taylor. in Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh -huh. or, mm. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things about residuals and things that just... Uh, Which residuals and, and, um, residuals and uh, royalties. royalties is not a industry norm. Yeah, um, it's not yet. But there's a debate about whether or not it should be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and that yeah. and that's this is what's this is the conversation that's being drummed up which regardless um because there's now there's now it's being brought called into question as to whether Helen Taylor was being entirely um acting in good faith here and obviously Platinum being a corporation nobody wants to trust them, but now it's like, well can we trust Helen Taylor because she seems like she's not being entirely truthful. So the whole thing is kind of a huge fucking mess. But regardless of who here, who's in the wrong here, it's it's drumming up an important conversation. It seems like because those debates about royalties, residuals, and how much people are being compensated for obviously need to happen. I have no doubt in my mind that voice actors in this industry are, in a lot of cases, are being undercompensated. 
Yeah, um, a lot sure. of talent probably is. And, and it's, it's, when you think about a, a, a game like Bayonetta, which is um, a very successful franchise by, for all intents and purposes and, and sells millions of copies, um, you would think the people who are key in making that a reality would be, would be receiving more than four thousand or fifteen thousand dollars for their time on it. But well, you also got to take into you also got to take into account things like you know she's being offered fifteen. But it's not like a one to one thing. She's not being paid hourly. It's she's being paid by session. Like five sessions of voice work could be done in a month. So she's technically getting fifteen thousand dollars for a month. I mean, I'm just spitballing here. Also, I, I believe time, the, the the SAG union of uh, what what constitutes the length of a session is about four hours. But also, it's not a one to one thing. It's not like, you know, our eight to five. Like, it's not like working eight to five at a regular job. It's just it's not it's, it's apples and oranges. So yeah. and this is why, again, I feel unqualified to really talk about this. And uh, you also got to think about like, well, why did Jennifer Hale take if, if she was offered around the same amount or less? Why did she end up taking it? But you also got to think, well, Jennifer Hale is a very, very famous voice actress. She has yeah. jobs probably lined up for the, for years and you think about, I, I don't know Helen Taylor's background necessarily or what she has lined up, but she may not be getting as much work as Jennifer Hale. So taking mm-hmm. a lesser amount for someone like for Jennifer Hale may not seem like a big deal. The, but Jennifer the, Hale the body of Helena it. Taylor's work is pretty much Bayonetta. So. Right. So, so and, but, but also Jennifer Hale did come out and comment on this and she's under NDA, so she can't say anything specifically one way or the other, but she has, she did point out her history of advocating for this kind of thing. And sure. she says, she says, I hope my history of, of advocating and speaking out about this kind of thing speaks for itself. That's all I can say. Um, and she's ho- and she says, you know, her response to the boycott thing is I hope, you know, this kerfuffle doesn't, you know, you're basically by boycotting the game. You're not supporting a bunch of other people who really worked their ass off to make this thing a reality, which is also another aspect of this thing. This whole thing is a fucking mess. Yeah. And I don't know how to feel Very about much. it. I don't know how to feel about it anymore. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Hale three. is well known in the industry for being very pro uh, actor, uh, trying to get them the best rates possible and support them best way she can. She is one of the best people in that uh, that industry in that regard. That space. Yeah, she's and and anyone the, the the one of the real big problems of this entire controversy has been that ever since this news broke. Uh, a lot of shitty people have been harassing Jennifer Hale on Twitter and any other medium possible, and just fuck those people. You, yeah, you, for sure. You ignorant the, the, shitbirds. The dirt bags come out of the woodwork when shit like this happens. So, yeah, I hope. I hope. I just wanted to talk about it briefly because I, again, I don't feel qualified to really say one way or the other how I feel about it because I'm confused. Um, the the one other we'll aspect of the story. Goes that I, I want to mention is that in addition to platinum or whoever their PR team coming back and talking about $15,000 being offered on the second offer to, um, Helena Taylor. Um, they also made the accusation that she wanted a six figure pay some. and f- full residuals, which residuals is something Nintendo never does. So right. that was obviously never going to happen. Um, and also uh, six figures well, for yeah. a voice actor. Um, even if you are like the prominent person behind that, that a main character in a video it game seems franchise, a bit high. that's very high. Like, but it, it, that doesn't happen. Usually it, it doesn't much. happen. Like the, the last person I could think of that was paid that, that amount of money, um, was the actor. And I forget his name who played Nico Bellic in, in Grand Theft Auto four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, but I, I mean, you said he was, you got a, but like, yeah, I don't know. Again, this is that thing where we're not really qualified to talk about. This, yeah, but exactly. Yeah. When you say that, it sounds a little crazy off the top. But think about the amount of content a video game voice actor has to produce exactly. versus one who works in animation or versus even somebody who works on like uh, live action television. Right. If, if yeah. you know, well, how much did the guy who plays Barry Allen and the Flash make per season of The Flash on CW, right? Because a season of that is 24 hours of television. Yeah. Versus how long is a video game, you know, how yeah. some video games, how much how much how much recording time is required to to make a video game Bayonetta. character. 
Bayonetta is not a Hideo Kojima game. Because it's, yeah, <laughs> because it's not just about, it's not just about the length of the narrative. It's about all the different voice lines, all the different sounds, all the different callbacks and everything that a video game voice actor has to do. Yeah. There, right? there is so much stuff on the cutting room floor. It's, it's when you probably talk, amounts yeah. far more and than the cap. actual produced content. Mocap I mean, also it's... goes hand in hand with this too. Technology and chat points out, which is, but yeah. I don't know if that's the case here. I don't think that's the case with Helena Taylor, but yeah, so. mocap also it is, is a part I mean, of it. But... Yeah. It's, it's a weird, not one-to-one kind of thing. So when, when you hear something like, Oh, well she wanted six figures and it's like, well, you know, hang on. Like I get that that's not the industry standard, but like, maybe that's the point. Maybe she knew she wasn't going to get that. And this is kind of like part of, a larger yeah. strategy to help start that conversation. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I personally, I think, I don't think that's what's going on with Helena Taylor. She seems kind of weird to me, but, um, and that's where, but, that's why everyone's kind of like, well, maybe acting, we, jumped, we jumped the gun on this. I don't, I don't but know. But we shouldn't be sitting here saying like, Oh, that's too much for these people to get paid. when we have no right. fucking clue what it is. You know, we are not qualified yeah. to make that decision. I think this, I think we have covered adequately kind of our, the best we can do in this situation. Um, and, but that's just what's happening in the world of video games. So hopefully, hopefully we explained it well enough. Um, but now, like I said, it's time to wrap up the show. With the four player minute, I want to remind everybody community segment usually goes here. It's now recorded in the pre show. You'll find it on YouTube. Um, so check that out if you want to see the questions we answered tonight. But now let's wrap up the show with the four player minute. Uh, you know how this works. I usually start with Brad. Brad's not here tonight. So I'm going to go with Crispy. All right. My four player, whatever, last word soapbox minute. Uh, this week I'm going to give to. Gotham Knights, which Ooh. comes out 26 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm actually probably going to because he's right been now. playing for 26 minutes. Yeah, I've been playing for 26 minutes. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, I am probably going to play it tonight, though. Um, this is an interesting game because it, you know, I, I don't know, man. Like, I've been the one guy, maybe Scud in Discord has been excited about this game. Like everyone else was like a is mad just hater like, of this game. Was he? I think no, so. No, he was a mad hater of like the of the 30 FPS thing, right? Uh, mm-hmm. He was like really excited about the game being a thing. These last couple announcements I think have like really gotten gotten under his skin. Which hey, it's fair, I get it. It is really fucking weird to listen to a video game company tell me why they can only make their game run at 30 FPS in this day and age when it's a, when it's a publisher like Warner brothers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Whatever. Uh, but I, I don't know. Like I, I've had this weirdly blase attitude about this game in particular, which is odd because it's a series that I really love. And the last game in this series, which I'm going to call, I'm going to consider this an Arkham game. I don't care what anybody else says. Um, what, that this specific studio WB Montreal made was Origins, and I famously did not like Origins. Yeah. I uh, was really kind of disappointed by it, and you know, I don't, you know, am I setting myself up for more disappointment? I don't know, but I got to try it, and it looks kind of cool. And a game where I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're playing it. I'm going to be honest; I canceled my pre-order today. But but I'll I mean, be here's honest. the thing one one thing that I've always felt about kind of you know uh extra comic you know like uh, material about batman outside of the comics i felt like the rest of the bat family is criminally underrepresented we don't get enough robin we don't get enough nightwing we don't get enough batgirl we maybe get enough red hood i don't know i'm still kind of whatever on that guy but uh I love that they made a game that's like, no, you're not playing as Batman, you're playing as these guys. And, you know, they say Batman's dead. I think we all uh, no, we all have true. the same... I think we all have the same reaction to that <laughs> of like, yeah, fucking right, believe it when I see it. Uh, but it doesn't matter because a game where I can play as Robin or I can play as Nightwing is fucking exciting to me. I love those characters and I want... I want them to get more exposure in the world, so I hope this game does really well. I'm gonna find out. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I'm, actually, I'm really glad you're playing this because the, the thing is, though, if it I is a no bad more. game, 
if it is bad, like if all the reviews are very fair, which honestly I think part of it is, honestly I think part of it is just like fatigue. I think I think I think this kind of game coming out in 2022 has to be better than any other one that we've played before for it to get like good reviews. You know what I mean? Sure. You can't make another game that's just as good as one that's already existed if it's one of these large AAA open world. Batman style Arkham beat 'em up games, right? It's got to be better, and if it's not better, it gets a four, right? But yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm projecting a little bit. We'll see. I'm excited though. Good theory. I'm glad you're playing it. I'm really eager to hear what you have to say about it after you play it because I do still want to play it. I but seeing the reviews made it easy for me to be like, okay, I think I'm gonna hold off on it for now. Uh, I will eventually go to it. I'm pretty sure at some point. But uh, like I said, I'm drowning. So I was like, all right. I'm going to cancel my pre-order for now, but I'm glad you're playing it. Uh, we'll, we'll hear about it on a future show. Um, if, it, if anything, uh, Gotham Knight's release has spurred a, a new, a renewed interest in uh, Arkham Knight. Um, if you, if you look at steam, yeah, it's numbers. Which was a good game. Taking about 2000. And a lot of you people, game. a lot of you people in the, in the interim years have kind of decided that it wasn't that good. And like, fuck you. That game was awesome. Dude, I think Arkham Knight's my favorite. I'm not. I'm not. I don't even give a shit. Arkham Knight's my favorite. I'm gonna Dude, say it right now. Yeah, hands D down, my favorite. That the, game was the good. The DLC for Arkham Knight, excellent. Oh, I only played one of those and I did not like it. But was that the Batgirl one? Yeah, I did not like the Batgirl one. Oh um, no, the the actual Batman content for that. I don't remember that. But yeah. the I'll Mr. Freeze arc okay. was really good. All right, Chris Davis, you're next. Go. Okay, my final thought is how much I regret the fact that another big game came out this week and we did not have time to talk There's about it. There's not enough time in the I, world. I begged Nick so that I could talk about this game, but he told me, no, you got to do it next week. I'm talking I about... I don't think that happened. I think that's a lie. I, <laughs> but, you're, okay. Okay. You're, Get down you're with your bad self. That's selective cool. memory there, Nick, but whatever. Uh, I'm talking about the rat game, A Plague Tale Requiem. Right. I have, I've been, I've put about four hours into it. I've beaten the first two chapters of it. This game is so fucking good. I will go into details about it next week. Um, and I'm, well, I, you know I beg y'all to play it, but especially if you it. played the first one, um, this is an evolution on the first game. The writing is so much better. The acting is so much better. They're slowly <laughs> opening up the mechanics. I, I mean, I feel like I'm not even out of the quote-unquote tutorial of the game. I'm kind of blown away by it. It is okay. so good. Well, it, it's probably for the best that it's wait until next week because I will have played a bunch of it by then as well. Uh, so we can, the two of us can have a conversation about it and it won't just be you. I, I is it hope. on Game Pass? Yes, it, it is. It is on Game Pass. It is a Game Pass game. Um, but even then, like... Anyone who is remotely curious about this game, especially for our conversations next week, please, oh, please, oh, please go out and try Innocence and then play this. And then Innocence you, is pretty good. I, I'm going to try and convert people to actually buy this game outside of Game Pass because it is it is that good so far. Um, mm. Honestly, don't, don't jinx yourself, man. It could fall apart at the dude, seams. You never it, fucking it know. It absolutely could. Um, but after four hours into this game, it's already going on my top 10 for the year. All right. All right. Well, now he's setting it up for now. I'm excited. All right. Nolan, your turn. Me? Yes. You're you. Okay. Let's do it. Um, so, uh, my four player bonanza, uh, starts now. Um, I'm pretty hyped, uh, because, uh, I'm going to F1 tomorrow. Ooh, um, that's right. It's here in Austin at Coda. <laughs> um, and so tomorrow and Saturday, I will be at F1, uh, kind of hanging out, watching the I bet Bernadette's cars go. excited. Oh, she is very excited. Um, so we should have a, a pretty fun time with that. Uh, my, I, I'm kind of going a four-player minute route. I'm, I'm sweaty about Death Verse. I really wanted it to be good. Um, I, I, you know, coming from a place of not really caring about it um, to enjoying the time when we played it with the community. I wanted it to do well. And then I was excited to capture footage for it and just super let down with how difficult it was. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, um, but you know, that's, that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. Um, 
And then I'm actually pretty excited because I just found out about a little game called Bones Cafe um, that came out earlier this year. Um, it is a apparently one to four player um, co-op game. Uh, I, I probably will play it solo, uh, but it's similar to Played Up. If you've heard of that, that's kind of been uh, going around a lot lately. Um, where you kind of design a little kitchen layout, you craft recipes and stuff. Uh, but the shtick in this is, is that you can poison your customers uh, and then uh, use their uh, remains uh, to create new recipes. But then you're also kind of a necromancer uh, and you can bring the dead bodies back to life uh, to help you in your kitchen. Uh, you can make them cook wow. for you. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I would check it out. There's a demo on Steam for free. Uh, if you want to uh, check that one out, but I, I might uh, try that. So it's it's pretty. I'm excited for that one. I feel like they're legally obligated to call one of their dishes Soylent Green. Uh, they might. I think there's like almost like I think there's close to a hundred recipes in the game. There's a whole lot. I'm if looking not, at the screenshots. Called Soylent Green. This this kind of looks like a, a 2D uh, take on Overcooked. But like, yeah, no, it is very similar to Overcooked. Um, uh, you know that 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 concept. If y'all haven't seen Played Up, it's kind of been going around lately. That one's kind of like a a co op game where you have a restaurant and your goal is to kind of become a five star restaurant. Um, and customers come in and they order food and you have to make the food. Obviously, it takes time and you have to you know choose your orders. And the kind of shtick of that is, is after every X number of like levels, you have to you have a new choice of do I want like they'll give you two options of like oh you're gonna add a new. A dish to the menu or you're going to add a new complication and it kind of that's what, like the puzzle of that i think the their um the, the the kind of fun part about that compared to overcooked um is the fact that you're like maintaining the same restaurant over and over and growing as opposed to going to different levels and having a very quick unique experience yeah technology in chat says this is a chef neuromancer in which you chef raise the bread nice <laughs> nice uh all right was that was that it nolan for you yeah mm -hmm. all right then my four player minute starts now i will also take a little bit of a, of a four player minute route i want to say that i'm obviously very hyped uh for the future of silent hill which is something i haven't been able to say in almost a decade uh is, which is crazy to me and um as much as this has the potential to fail uh it also has the potential to be very exciting and very rewarding for someone who already is invested in the franchise and likes it and loves it, um, which is me. So yeah, I'm, I'm, there's a lot that I'm not usually a fan of like flooding the market with like all kinds of announcements for like one kind of singular thing, but I feel like the dam, it's like there's been a dam blocking Silent Hill for like 10 years and now it's broken. And now it's like, here's all the stuff that we owe you. <laughs> um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. I'm, ex I'm, I'm ready. Fucking ready. Um, I want to say thank you to Chai Tai, um, because he gifted me a game. I, I'm actually going to be doing a stream on Saturday. I th I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Saturday at this point. Uh, I I have the house to myself right now. My wife is still out of town, so I'm just kind of like trying to keep myself entertained by myself. So I'm gonna stream all day on Saturday. A bunch of horror games. Uh, it's horror. It's spooky season. Um. So I'm just going to kind of queue up a lot of different horror stuff that I haven't played and try it out. Uh, I'm going to play through Love, Sam, which Chai Tai also gets at me. Um, a while back has been trying to get me to play it forever, uh, and I, I owe him that. So I'm going to play Love, Sam. But he gifted me again a game that I was already planning on playing, and I was planning on buying it to play it on the stream. And I he gifted it to me this afternoon. It's called Stay Out of the House, uh, and it involves... <laughs> Uh, getting trapped in a house with a cannibalistic serial killer and trying to evade them and escape the house. It's like an escape room while you're being hunted, uh, which sounds really cool. And he gifted it to me and said, don't look into it. Don't read anything about this. Just play it. It's great. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to my stream because a lot of stuff I do want to try. Um, I'm going to play In Sound Mind. I think I played a demo for that a long time ago, but now I've had the full version for a while, so I'm looking forward to playing that. And um, if you're listening to this on the go, it's probably too late. It's probably already happened, but go back and watch it in the VOD. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun. If you're watching us live, tune in Saturday. I'll probably start around 10 a.m. and just go until I'm tired. Um, and let's see. My, uh, I think I, oh, fuck, I thought I had one more. 
No, I'm going to leave it at that. I think I'm, I, there's so many thoughts. I mean, fuck, I'm excited for Resident Evil 4 remake. I think that speaks Same. for itself. It looks great. Um, and that's it, guys. Thank you. So I know it's been playing catch up. There's a lot of stuff to cover tonight. So maybe probably a little bit on the longer side uh, this week. But I want to thank everybody who tuned in to watch us live. I want to thank anybody watching on YouTube uh, after the fact or listening to the show on the go. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have not yet, please join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player. If you're new, stop into the introductions channel. Say hello. We'd love to hear from you guys. And um, uh, fourplayernetwork.com. You can find us there. Again, if you, have, if you want us to answer a question during the pre-show next week, make sure you leave a comment on the post for this episode or you can go to the the video on YouTube, or you can go to the submit a question channel in discord. I'll check all of them and I'll pull questions from everywhere. So, uh, make sure you do that before next Thursday. Um, but in the meantime, guys, uh, be good to each other, be safe, play video games, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Bye. Bye. Jesus. <laughs>